Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Elida High School, where tonight the homestanding Bulldogs welcome in their league rival, the Shawnee Indians. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Scott Mag and our entire WSN crew. And Scott, we take a look at both these teams. Shawnee comes in at three and six, three and five in the WBL, and Elida at four and five and three and five in the WBL. And really not playing for playoff implications, playing for a lot of pride. This is a big rivalry game. Absolutely. This is a rivalry. Both these teams probably don't like each other that well. I noticed before we came into the game, like all of them had beat Shawnee <laughs> shirts on. That. And uh, so I don't think there's any love lost between these two teams. No. Our pregame show is presented by Lima Chevy Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We're proud to call this home. What is our keys to the game for both teams, Scott? Now, first for the Shawnee Indians, um, talking to Coach Cooper, he said, first of all, they got to do better special teams. Last week they had three muff punts and again a rivalry game you can't muff a punt and give teams good field position. Along with that is kind of the next key is know your keys. Keys by you know you, you can't muff a punt you can't kick it out of bounds. Right. You got to know who you got. Uh, Elida likes to run the ball and try to trick you with some razzle dazzle plays so you got to know your keys and know your defensive scheme and last but not least they had penalties was another key. They had 13 of them last week so they got to get better at that. For the home team, the Elida Bulldogs, they, number one, have to control the speed from Shawnee. They can't let those speed guys get outside and get in open space because it cause, could cause some problems. And along that, with them knowing about the special teams problems that Shawnee had last week, Elida has to win the special teams battle. And last but not least, Elida wants to win the line of scrimmage. So if they're winning it on defensive end, they're controlling that speed. And if they're winning it on line of scrimmage on offense, they'll be able to run the ball and do all their uh, extra gadget plays to be successful tonight. It's Shawnee, it's Elida, it's a WBL, it's a big rivalry game. When we come back, we'll have the kickoff. You're watching High School Sports right here on WSN. Welcome back to Elida High School, where tonight the Bulldogs host the Shawnee Indians. Elida will kick off to Shawnee. Scott, we said earlier, we take a look at both these teams. Uh, Shawnee comes in. Uh, three in a row they've won. Uh, or I'm sorry, they, they, three wins this year, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, beat Bath 17-7, uh, OG 21-7, Kenton 35-13. So uh, not exactly the powerhouse of the WBL, but uh, if they can get a win tonight, they got to feel good about uh, how they finish the season. Right, and both, both, both teams had lost their quarterbacks for some time. You know, uh, Shawnee lost – their quarterback in Elida, there was 4-0 and lost their quarterback and kind of been reeling since. Sure. So uh, both teams are coming off some injuries. We'll see what we can do tonight. So we are underway from Kraft Stadium here in Elida High School. Shawnee takes the first half kickoff. They'll bring it up over the 25 to the 30, try to find a seam in there, and it's taken down by a host of Bulldogs. Shawnee will come out on offense led by quarterback Chase Berry last week. He was 9-17 for 65 yards, one touchdown. The 5'11", 199-pound senior. He can run. He can pass. He's a little bit of a dual threat guy. Yeah, and what they like to do is they like to do like jet sweeps and things like that to get their athletic uh, wings out in space. And then what happens is what you do is you get the uh, defense going in sure. there and then they take Carter Fay down the seam, the big tight end. So this is Barry. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to pick up about yeah. seven to eight yards. So a nice run by Chase Barry. You're going to see that quite a bit tonight. Yeah, and he was their all-everything running back until their quarterback got hurt, and then they had to move him to a quarterback this year. And you take a look at what they did last week, Scott. They, they ran – Zach Noonan ran for 130 yards. Jordan Banks ran for 105 yards. And Chase Berry, 95. So they had 330 yards of offense on the ground. Yeah, right. And, and like they like to say, you like to get Banks out on the side, and they like to get Keegan Wilson on those jet sweeps and like to get him outside into that space so they can use their athleticism and run past people. So here's Barry in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Jordan Banks. He goes off the right side. He's going to pick up about three yards. That first down is our first first down tonight. Tonight's first downs are presented by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Citizens National Bank is our first down sponsor. Yeah, and um, Elida, you we're going to hear that or at least going to see this a lot tonight. Number 55, Tory Thomas, Yes, who does a lot. He does everything for them. He's their uh, offensive tackle. Usually they run behind him, and he's their defensive end. And he's going to be in a lot of stops tonight, number 55. So if you're watching from home, keep an eye on him because he'll be around the ball most of the night. Here's Barry in the gun. He's going to pitch the ball back to Zach Noonan. He's going to take it off to the right side and take him down maybe a yard at most. Yeah. And guess who? 55 gets up on. <laughs> Tori Thomas. He's <laughs> yeah. the anchor on both those lines. Him and Parker yeah. Krim do an outstanding job. Yes, they do. Brady 
So we'll see. Um, you know, I talked about the jet sweeps and haven't seen it yet, but a lot of those flankers are coming in from the side. What they like to do is get you thinking inside, and they run uh, Barry up the middle. So here's Barry in the gun. He's going to come over to the right side. He's looking down the field. He'll throw to the sidelines. He's got a man that's picked off. Picked off by number four for the Bulldogs. That's Tyler Carter, the 5'9 senior, picks it off. So we got our first turner of the night, Scott. Yeah, and Tyler did a great job of, of uh, seeing that out pattern. He jumped it, and then he came up and, and uh, made the interception as Barry's pass was just a little bit outside, and uh, they may call a penalty here. I do see a flag on the field which they may have called maybe taunting or something after the play because... I, yes, I did see that. You're, you are correct. Carter kind of looked back at the, He might have said something. And again, as, as we mentioned in the pregame, I don't think there's much love between <laughs> these two teams. These two schools do not like each other. No. You're absolutely right. <laughs> so they're going to call an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Elida. That'll back them up 15. Um, so we didn't talk much about turnovers, uh, and that could be a huge plus for either team tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You, and, uh, you know, coming in on paper, both these teams are evenly matched, right? So you don't want to turn the ball over to give the other team extra possessions and, and, and also make silly mistakes of doing unwanted penalties. So here comes the Bulldogs. They are led by the 6'4", 195-pound sophomore Ryan McGew. He took over for Larkin Henderson when he went down. On the season, Ryan is 40 of, 100, or 40 of 87 for 402 yards, four touchdowns, but unfortunately seven interceptions. So uh, turns the ball over quite a bit. But he's a first-time quarterback, so that kind yeah. of stuff happens. And there's that jet sweep. And Elida gets Elida's speed outside as Elkshorn gets out there and makes a good good read of turning that one up and getting about nine and a half yards there. So David Etzcorn takes the corner and gets nine yards. You're correct. And they've got good athletes. They've got good skill position players, and it's going to test the uh, the Shawnee defense tonight. Yeah. And a lot of put a lot of pressure on those defensive ends. They got to stay home and they got to force everything back inside of them linebackers. So here's Ryan McGew in the gun. He's flanked by Carter on the right side. He's going to hand the ball off to excuse me Etzcorn. He's going to take it up the middle. He's going to get a first down, and that is a Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, Brady Kirk did a great job of following his blockers and, and following that hole by uh, Thomas and Grimm. We're doing a great job on that right side of uh, opening up that hole for them to get through. So some big fellows up front for them. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot of Brady Kirk tonight. Young man's had an outstanding year for the Bulldogs. 74 attempts, 360 yards, and two touchdowns. But he gets hard yards, and he has to work really hard behind that line. So here's McGew in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Kirk again. He goes off the right side. He's going to get down the sideline, and he gets ankle tackled by number nine for the Indians, and that was Wyatt Morgan, and he saved the touchdown right there. Yeah, he sure did. And, you know, what I was watching on that play was number 40, Aiden Daly, was doing a great job on the outside. He did a good job. I, I thought it was uh, – Grim the first time, but I was wrong. It was 40. It was it was um, Daly, who's done a great job on that right side. Now he's shifting over to the left side. But he did a great job of keeping that end inside and allowed his running back to get on the outside. So here comes McGew in the gun. He's flanked to the left by Brady Kirk. He's got one receiver to the white, one split white. Here comes Kirk up the middle. He's going to go off left tackle, and he's going to get about a yard, yard and a half. Yeah. That's great defense by the Shawnee Indians. When uh, Ryan McGee does decide to throw, his favorite target is number seven, Jackson Koval. 25 receptions on the year, 331 yards and three touchdowns. He'll also go to Keaton Hockey. He's got 27 receptions on the year for 330 yards and four touchdowns. Look, he, the, McGee is, is a fine athlete. And he's got a really strong arm. He just needs more time, yeah, more right. experience. He just Absolutely. needs some reps. You're yep. right. You, you need that varsity reps. You get that speed, the difference. And here's McGoo in the gun. He's got Kirk in motion. He's going to keep it himself and go up the middle. And he is hit hard by that Shawnee front, front four. And they hit him hard and knock him down. It's going to bring up third and about eight. Along with uh, Wyatt Morgan came up from his defensive back position to make that tackle. I think Magoo had the right, right read there, but he, he was a little reluctant of running that one up. He, 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 he did the right thing. He pulled it out of the running back's arm because they were taking away that jet sweep, and he went behind it, but he, he kind of like hesitated. Yes, and he did. And that's what you're talking yep. about, you know, more reps. When he's two years from now when he's a senior, he's going to see that right away, and he's going to be six, seven yards down the field before he hesitates. And here's the handoff up the middle again, and that's going to be close to another Citizens National Bank first down. Let's see where they mark it at. It was third and five. And that's going to bring up, it looks like they're going to call it fourth down. About and one. About fourth and one. one so yeah, maybe, maybe two. Uh, Coach Harmon's going to keep his troops on the field, and why not? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's week 10, and you got yeah. nothing to lose, and here they go. So the Bulldogs are going to go for them fourth and two from the 28-yard line. 
Yeah, especially if you're getting two or three yards, kind of like the old Buckeyes of uh, <laughs> Woody right. Hayes, three yards in a cloud of dust. So here comes McGew. He's got Brady Kirk to the right, and he's got two receivers to his right. He looks over at Coach Harmon, waits the call, and they're going to take a timeout. They're going to talk this one over. We'll take a timeout in the booth. 7.06 to go. It's 0-0 here from Elida. We're back here at Craft Stadium at Elida High School. We're with 7.06 to go. The Elida Bulldogs going for it on fourth down from the 28-yard line. Scott, I'm a big fan right now. When you got an athletic quarterback like McGill, I'm a big fan of getting him out on the corner and letting him make the decision to keep right, it. Right, right, and putting a lot of pressure on the defensive back, defensive ends. They come up, you dump it over top of it. If they stay back, you run and get that two or three yards. I, I agree with you 100%. Get him outside and let him make the decision. Like an RPO type thing. Yep, here comes McGoo. He's going to hand the ball off to Ed Scorn. He's going to go around the left oh, side. Great cutback. He, yeah, you're right. He was not anywhere near the first down, and David Ed Scorn cuts it up, and he picks up another Citizens Bank first down. Wyatt Morgan came in from his defensive back, and he maybe set the edge and it made Ed Scorn to cut that back. And unfortunately for him, he didn't have enough of his buddies right. to come and take away that cutback. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 25. And I said they, they run David Etzcorn, they run Tyler Carter, they, they run Brady Kirk. So they've got a whole slew of, of athletes that they'll get the ball to. Yeah, and, you know, just wait. They're going to keep <laughs> thinking run, 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 and now they're going to they're sneak yeah. somebody. They're going to – that RPO, they're going to pull that out with somebody's gut, and they're going to get somebody down the seam here because Magoo can throw a ball. Oh, absolutely. He's got a really good arm. Yes. He's going to hand the ball off to Brady Kirk. He goes off the left side, and there's a flag comes in late. You just wonder if that's and not a holding hold call. Yeah. Yeah. And we, collar maybe. I think he's pulling up. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see here. You haven't heard nothing. The Amari, Amari Walsh, the fine freshman, who's been fantastic for him this year, and Keaton Hockey, two names you haven't been heard yet, but uh, we'll see what they do here in the game. Yeah, I think it was a hold. It's going to go back against the line. They'll push it back 10 yards to the about the 30-yard line. And, and those, Scott, are the things that when you're when you're three and five and four and six and you're, and you're you're losing football games, these are the things that seem to pile up on you. Absolutely. And now you know they're driving in that penalty. They're they're looking at second and two or three instead. It's first and 15 because of the holding call. You know, you're, you're playing now behind the sticks Absolutely. instead of, you know, if second and two, your whole playbook's in, in, in play. Here's Magoo. He's going to hand the ball off to Kirk. He goes off the right side. Great job by him of making a five-yard gain out of look, probably our four-yard gain out of a potential two-yard loss. Elida comes into the ball game, Scott, averaging 19 points a game. Defensively, they give up 20.9 a game. Their wins this year came the first four of the year. They beat Spencerville, Kenton, OG, and Bath, and uh, have not won since then. So they've lost five in a row, so they are desperate for a win tonight. Absolutely. And who better to get it against than your league rival? <laughs> yeah, right. Especially, like I said, when we came in, they all had those I was stunned by that, yeah. Beat, Shawnee, or beat yeah. Shawnee and Orange on them, and yeah. it was uh, pretty impressive. <laughs> it was. Coach Harmon takes this rivalry kind of serious. <laughs> right. So here comes Magoo. He's got one in motion. He's going to keep it himself and throw off to the right side. He's got Edscorn out there, but put the ball a little too high, and David yeah. Edscorn had to stretch out, and he falls down. A great effort by Edscorn to go get that one, but he'd probably been better off to let that one go out of bounds because he ended up losing five yards that he just got on the run. You are correct. That'll bring up third and 15 from the 26. So a drive that started out and looked promising has just went backwards the last three plays. And see, you, you mentioned it about the holding penalty. He got them back behind the sticks, and they got to try to do fancy stuff, to not what they were doing because they were they – were, gouging them with four or five yards on the, you know, up the middle and outside. Instead, they got to go to do something that they're yeah. really not comfortable doing. And, and uh, as you can see, it hasn't worked out too well for them. They're going to burn another timeout. And they are going to take another timeout. That'll be the second one and a half. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 4.44 to go. You're watching high school football on WOSC. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Metzger Financial Services is our timeout sponsor. Our premier sponsor tonight is John Stocker DDS. John Stocker DDS providing dental care for high school sports fans. Dr. John Stocker is our premier sponsor. So third and 15 from the 30, Scott, 444 to go. You, you, uh, Elida obviously hopes they get something on the board here, whether it's three or six. So uh, let's see what they do here with third and 15. 
Right, at least he could try to get half it back to go for a fourth down. Here's Magoo as he's looking across the field. He throws deep down the wow. middle. He's got a man out there, and oh, you're going to get a pass penalty. interference. Yeah. Absolutely. Both of us saw that. And he had the, he has got a strong arm. Scott. Sure, he, he kind of threw that, that off the back of yes. his foot and threw that 40 yards. Uh, I, I'm sure if you're a receiver, he got a little under the air under. He had him, he had him open, and I think if he would have threw it at more of on a seed or a line, he might have had him. But nonetheless, they got the uh, – Pass interference. Got the pass interference, yeah. absolutely. Right. He had him, and he also had his uh, running back over here on the left. But I think he wanted a touchdown. I don't blame him. That was a great throw. <laughs> You're right. It's off his back foot, 40 yards. That's impressive. I can throw it 10 yards. So that'll put it in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor tonight is brought to you by T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit T&D Interiors on Allentown Road. T&D Interiors is our red zone sponsor. I think we're going to have sponsors for you and I, Scott. I mean, pick one. Who, who, who do you want sponsoring you and who do you want sponsoring right. me? I don't know. You might get more sponsors than me. I don't, I don't, I, uh, I don't know if I'm well-liked enough to get a sponsor. Here comes McGew and the Bulldogs. He's going to keep it. He's going to hand it to Brady Kirk. He goes off the right side. He gets to the corner, and he gets pushed out of bounds just about to the end zone, and they almost drew first blood there. Yeah, they sure did. It, it might be uh, the extent of my uh, vision line here. We're kind of <laughs> stuck up here in the, in the uh, in the press box and <laughs> looking to our right is very <laughs> difficult for me to see. But you are absolutely right. Also a penalty flag out here. Like I think maybe another holding call. <laughs> Let's see what the call is here. Yeah. A Should block in the back. Yeah. Oh, defense. Oh, that's going to be a... Hmm. never heard a block in the back call against the defense before. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're blocking in the back for there, but uh, that's yeah. going to move the ball to the to the five-yard line. So that'll put Elida right in business. Yeah. I don't I, – yeah, that's interesting. That's something yeah. – wow. That'll be another Citizens National Bank first down. So here comes McGew and the Bulldogs. Ryan McGew's in the gun. He's got Brady Kirk to his right. He's got two receivers to the left. He's got no one on the right side of him as they await the call from Coach Harmon here. 4.31 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Kraft Stadium here to Elida. Big rivalry night. Elida and Shawnee. Here's McGew. He's going to hand the ball to Kirk. He goes up the middle. He gets to about the one, and that's where he'll be taken down. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. A few linemen helped pushing him forward for an extra yard or two there. It was a good job. You've seen that more and more even in college. And yes. I forget what game it was where they would just line up behind the, the quarterback and kind of pushed him two yeah. or three yards. That might have been the NFL. Well, that started years ago with yeah. Notre Dame and USC, sure. the bush push, they mm -hmm. called it. But, you know, Scott, one thing I've noticed tonight about Brady Kirk is his vision is fantastic. Yeah, he, and he really cuts back well. He does. He does. He sees one cut and he goes hard and – you know, maybe maybe they can't do that in high school because the, maybe <laughs> these officials are talking about it. So, I know it's on TV all the time now. If you yeah. watch any college or professional uh, football games, you see it all the time. Yeah, yeah you, you see you, it all the time. There's usually one or two guys pushing the pile. Let's always see, see what they say here. The result of the last play is a first down. Well, they're just going to call it a first down. Nothing, yeah. nothing more, nothing less. So we first in goal from the three-yard line. <clears throat> Another Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, I think because they had – they took the penalty. It was 11, so they had to get a yard, I guess. It was on the seven because it was half the distance. Here's Magoo, hands it to Kirk. Kirk goes up the middle, and let's see if he gets in. Close it's going to be awful close. He, like he yeah. fell forward, yep. They're going to call it a touchdown. Tonight's touchdowns are sponsored by Fat Jack's Pizza. Get the Fat Jack's Pizza before and after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice-cold drink. Scott, that was the Brady Kirk drive. He handled it yeah, really well. He there. sure did. And like you mentioned right before that penalty in that last play or whatever that we've seen is how good he is, his vision. He makes one cut and he goes up hard. He doesn't dance around. He, I mean, he's slow to the hole, but once he sees it, he cuts hard and, and, and goes after it. Let's see on the extra point here. <clears throat> we'll get the point after try here. Snap is back. Hold is good. The kick is up, and it is good. With 3.56 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard, the Atlanta Bulldogs lead the Shawnee Indians 7 to nothing. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our scoreboard is provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lyman Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. So, Scott, 
Bulldogs take the early 7-0 lead, and they kept it mainly on the ground, the yes. big pass play. They get the penalty, and they move down the field. Right, and again, they were run, 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 and then you sneak a pass in there and catch them on, off guard there a little bit. But what an impressive drive for the uh, Bulldogs to basically run it down their throat, yeah, that's right? that's exactly I mean, what I was thinking. 60 yeah. yards and basically said, here, you know what we're going to do, but we're just going to be better than you tonight. So Shawnee's got to get that cleaned up, and I, I'm sure they will. Their defensive coaches will make their adjustments, and it'll be interesting to see how the game transpires from here. Well, here's the kick down the right side of the field. Fielded at the 10-yard line. He'll bring it up to about the 25-yard line, and that's number two for the Indians. That's Jordan Banks. <clears throat> so Shawnee comes in winning two in a row over Ottawa, Glandorf, and Kenton. They average 14.4 a game, but here's the problem. Scott, <laughs> defensively, they give up 22 a game. Right, yeah. And you can't, average, you can't, can't give up more than you, you, you make. Right. And, and part of that is you have a, a very, very good running back playing yes, quarterback. exactly. And everybody knows – I mean, there's a lot of good coaches in this league, and they know what you're going to probably do. So they can take one thing away, but they can't take normally two. And – and that's kind of, Shawnee's been one-dimensional. So here come the Indians, Chase Berry under center, excuse me, in the gun. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be just terrorized by the light of front as they go after him, and he's going to take a loss of about a yard. And you saw number 50 for Elida Parker Krim, the 6'2 freshman. I call him the Krim Reaper. He was all over Chase Berry. Yes, he was. And what a great play. For him to only lose one, right. he was dancing around way back there at the 20. That could have been disastrous. It could have been an eight, nine-yard loss. But what great vision and running ability by him to get only making that, I guess, officially as a two-yard loss if you look at the scoreboard there. So here comes Chase Berry in the end end. He's got Jordan Banks to his left. He's going to hand the – he's going to keep it himself, fake it to Banks, and he's going to go off the left side, and he's going to be – pick up a Citizens National Bank first down and a nice run by Chase Berry. Absolutely. And you can see he's all he does. He just needs a little crack. He does. And he sneaks right through there. I mean, he it, again, you talk about Kirk making one foot in the ground and turning. He does the same thing. He puts his foot in the ground. He goes up hard. And uh, he's held the ball. He's pretty, pretty solid with it there. And he went right through there and, and carried guys. You know, not many quarterbacks run people over and carry them for an extra one or two yards at the end of a play. <clears throat> Defensively, the Atlanta Bulldogs give up 129 yards a game in the on the ground and 128 in the air, so uh, very even there. So here comes Jordan Banks. He's going to get the carry, and he's going to be taken down right at the line of scrimmage. So it looks to me like Coach Cooper said to his troops, look, if they're going to run it down our throats. We're going to go right back at him, punch yeah. him in the mouth. So Absolutely. that's what a good rivalry is all about. <laughs> yeah. And, and Banks, I don't know if he's really that comfortable running between the tackles. He likes to get outside. He's got back, yeah. Yeah, he likes to get outside. Yep. And, you know, you don't want to be around those big uglies. No. He wants to get outside of those defensive backs Absolutely. where he can put his foot in the ground and juke him a little bit and run. He, um, so, hey, we're, we're seeing a lot of talented running backs yes. tonight on both sides. So here come the Indians. Second and eight from the 41. This is Chase Berry under the gun. He's got Banks to his right, and he's got two receivers to the right. He's going to roll right. He's going to look down the field. He's going to throw down the sidelines, and just off the mark, his intended target was number 20 for the Indians, and that's Carter Fay, the 6'5 soft or the six-five tight end. Excuse me. Yep, and uh, that's kind of what what I was saying earlier in the pregame. They like to run, 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 and then like to get him in a seam or some out route. He did have him. Just threw a little bit high. Um, I kind of want to go back with with sure. Banks, and I feel like maybe I did him wrong. He's a very good running back, oh, and don't get me wrong that he can go up the middle, but I think he really likes it outside. He uses well, speed. He doesn't like to get He's not a very there. big kid, yeah, so, you yeah. know, I wouldn't blame him if he didn't want to hit them big uglies in the middle <laughs> yeah, there. So here comes Barry. He's in the gun. He's got Banks to his left. He's got a man in motion. He's going to keep himself, go off the left side. And picks up about three yards, and that's going to bring up fourth and about five. So Jerry Cooper's got a decision here from midfield. Yeah. But, like you know, this is kind of – a chess game is what you mentioned. That both sure. teams basically are playing for their season, not really for playoffs, just to to see a, a win over your rival. And so the Indians have decided they're going to punt the ball, play field position here, back deep for the Bulldogs is number three, David Etzcorn, and he is a dangerous return man. If he gets in some space, look out, brother. So the snap is back. The punt is up. It is a nice punt. Etzcorn's going to field it. Ooh, it avoids the Lord. first man. What dangerous! <coughs> Noonan almost won down there and he about caught it and Noonan was right yes, there. Did. That's going to put the Bulldogs at the 45 yard line, first and 10 with a 107 to go. 
Well, there's one thing about the fall weather, Scott. It's really nice and warm out, but the allergies just come out, and they just tear me up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it also could be a little extra dust on the ground with the oh, uh, absolutely. various farmers taking off their crops. <clears throat> So seven and nothing with 107 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Craft Stadium at Elida High School. Beautiful, beautiful Friday night for Week 10 football. And next week, partner, it gets it gets real serious. Yes, it as does. As the OHSAA state football playoffs begin. Yep. There's kind of a big game down in Mercer County tonight. <laughs> yeah, which I believe is on. Uh, it is. One of it's our live. Other yes. Absolutely. Oh, what a play! What a play! So David Etzcorn takes the handoff, and he is just underneath that pile of Shawnee Indians. Yeah. They did a great job of staying home in pursuit, and the defensive end just stayed and held his ground. Yeah, sure did. The uh, linebacker Spiker got out there. Number 18 did a great job of not letting not letting Etzcorn get outside, and you know, he kind of held him up long enough for his friends to come and clean up. That's a great name for a linebacker, yeah, Spiker. Spike, That's yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks. J.J. Spiker. So that'll bring up second 14 from the 25. The Indians are trying to pin the Bulldogs back deep. Elida uh, leads 7-0. I'm sorry. I thought I was an 18. It's number 10, Keegan Wilson. Keegan's the one. I'm sorry, JJ. <laughs> and so, hey, we got him some airtime. <laughs> yeah, right. Here comes McGue. He's going to scramble to his left. He's under heavy pressure. And he throws it to the side, yeah. and he just throws it away. And, Good and decision that, by the South to get that, rid of yep. it. Not forcing it in yep. there, take a chance of an interception, throw it up to the stands, and live to play another down. That's a great point, Scott. We just talked about his maturation uh, of becoming a, a, a very – and look, I think all of us look at him and know that he's going to be a really good quarterback. And, you know, he just needs that time, the reps, mm -hmm. and uh, on, on the field. Right, and, you know, maybe early in the season when he first started, maybe he throws that one right. and uh, possibly gets intercepted or a close interception. But he's he's had that rep and seen sure. and known, hey, I'm just going to throw up in the stands and we'll uh, run the next play here. So third and 14 from the 25. Playcock's down to eight. They better get this one off in a hurry. Migu is in the gun. He gets the snap. He's going to fake it to the right, throw back to the left. He's got a screen set up out there for Edscorn. He tries to break free, and I'm sorry, that's number 12 for the Bulldogs. <clears throat> Keaton oh, Hockey as yeah. he gets in the game. Keaton Hockey, I talked about him earlier. He's got 27 catches on the year, and that is going to bring the first quarter to the end. The Elida Bulldogs lead 7-0. Rivalry game with Shawnee right here on WSN. Our scoreboard is provided by Web Insurance Agency tonight, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. Yeah, and we kind of mentioned that Shawnee, one of their keys was their to, uh, keys of the game was to know their keys. They did a great job there. They didn't bite on that fake screen to the right side. They all stayed home and knew that there was going to be a bubble screen going back to the left. Great play design. Sure. They knew it was coming, but as soon as he caught it, there was four guys standing there waiting for him and only allowed that a minimal yards gain there. So he light is in punt formation. Get the punt up high. Back deep for the Indians. They're going to let that one bounce. That was number five for the Indians. That was Chase Berry back there. He made a good decision. He was he was going to be taken down really hard. And, Scott, it just goes to show you, we've talked a lot about both these teams already, and we see the speed and the athleticism of a lot of these kids out here. And it just goes to show you how good the top three or four teams in the WBL really are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a lot of those teams are going to be playing next week, as you had mentioned, uh, in the playoffs. And so hopefully, you know, if these guys – rooting for everybody in the league because sure. you want them to do well. Oh, absolutely. It's great for, great for your league and great credibility. And yeah, there's pretty, you know, Walpock's doing really well. Defiant Van Wert, is, Van Wert yeah. yeah. Van Wert is a scoring juggernaut. Oh, my goodness. They can put points up in a hurry. So here comes Chase Berry and the Indians. He's got Jordan Banks to his right. He's going to hand the ball off to number 12. This is Zach Noonan. Noonan. So he gets about four yards, and that will bring up second and six. Yeah, and, and first time he touched the ball. But Noonan is a guy that li he likes to get outside. They, they run him like on a sweep or jet sweep type situations, likes to get him outside. He does a good job of reading and cutting back, and he's like a one-cut guy. He makes one read sure. and goes up hard. You know, not, He don't dance around. He just kind of makes a move, and he runs hard. He protects the football, usually gets – an extra yard or so after the contact. So he's a tough guy to bring down as well. We talked about him from his game last week, and he had 130 yards, and he averaged eight yards a carry last week. So here's Noonan again off the left side, and he has nothing, but he has yeah. swarmed down. He's going to lose a yard on that play. 
sure is. He was met by the entire <laughs> linebacking crew and uh, line by the uh, Bulldogs. Kevin McGuire, number 79, got that. He was a uh, space eater up there. I think the uh, uh, offensive or defensive lineman. Kevin McGuire, you are right. He is 6'1", 310 pounds, and I would not want to find him in a dark alley. No. He is very intimidating, and he just looks like he wants to eat up <laughs> offensive linemen. Yeah. I love that kid. He just plays hard. Here's Chase Berry in the gun. He's going to hand it off to Noonan again. Noonan goes to the left side, tries to get out, and he's going to pick up a Citizens National Bank first down. He's seeking contact, yes, right? He's he going is. and hit. He's rumbling outside and trying to get up there. He's a smart man. He gets away from uh, <laughs> Kevin. Uh, he's like, I, I tried that middle. I'm not going no, up there. No, 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 no. Kevin, you, you can keep the middle, bud. <laughs> right. I'm gonna, you come out here and see if you can catch me. <laughs> smart. I tell you. Uh, Newton, he's not, he's not dumb, man. No, he's, he's a smart guy. You know, McGuire and Torrey Thomas and Parker Krim, that, that's, a, that's an imposing trio right there. Yeah, let's get outside here where uh, you guys come catch me. So here's he's got Banks and Noonan flank to the right and to the left. Banks is going to go in motion. Barry's going to keep it himself. He's going to look downfield. He's going to get out of the box, and he's going to be taken down. And that's Parker Krim, the Krim Reaper, the big <laughs> freshman, comes out of nowhere and takes down Chase Barry. Wow. <laughs> he's grabbed him with one arm <laughs> and threw him down. That Wow. How good is he going to be when he's a senior? You know what, Scott? Ooh, I inter scary. Yeah, I interviewed him earlier this year, and I said, hey, he, he was talking to me about all the kids in the hallway are calling him the Crim Reaper now. And I said, well, you know, do you have any other nicknames? And he said, well, they call me the Cobra. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, my real name is David Parker. And he said, but I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, uh, I bet everybody over uh, a certain age knows who yeah, Dave Parker was. Who he yes, was. Absolutely. Played Left. for the Reds and the Pirates. Yes. <laughs> and he was a specimen, too. Yes, he was. Oh, Ooh. ran into his own man there. And he was taken down again. And that's going to bring up third and about 17. So it's really got the Indians set back. Yep. And that's Torrey Thomas getting a stop there from his defensive line. I, I it's a good Elida defense. Yes. It really yes. is, it, Scott. It, it yes. really is. And, and guys that that play hard and play together, you know, they work off each other's strengths, and you know, they rotate four guys in, four or five guys, so that keeps them fresh and able to attack the quarterback. So here's Chase Berry. He's in the gun. He's got one receiver to the right, and he's got a man in motion. He's going to take the snap. He's going to look across the field. He's going to throw to the right. He's got a man out there. Almost picked off number seven for the Elida Bulldogs. That's Jackson Kovalt, and he almost had that one, Scott. Yes, he did. It was kind of – It's almost like a up. wheel route. Yeah, it was. To Noonan was coming out, and he kind of looked open, but uh, it was kind of a zone, and the safety read, was reading that all the way and just was a little – Kovalt It's just – Went right through his hands. He'd love to have that one back. Yes, he would. There's a lot of grass in front of him. It might have been 14 and nothing if he would have caught that. So that's going to make it fourth and 16 from the 30-yard line. Shawnee's in punt formation. <clears throat> and back deep for the Bulldogs is David Etzcorn. The punt goes up. Almost blocked. Yeah. They got heavy pressure, but a great punt. And here comes Etzcorn up the left side. He's got room out there if he can get through. And he has hit, hit hard by number 33 for the Indians. And that is Ring. Ben Caprilla, 5'11", 195-pound sophomore. Go ahead and play special teams, young man. That's the way to do it. Yes. But I think uh, Edscorn was uh, he was seeking that. <laughs> he was. He wrapped the ball up. He was like, all right. <laughs> Here we I go. Can, I can see what's coming. I'm going to make sure that I win on this contact. But. It was, uh, it was a heck of an impact there. We talk about the Elida Bulldogs as they've lost five in a row after a great 4-0 start, and they lose their all-everything quarterback, Larkin Henderson. And, look, that's tough for any football team when you lose your leader, especially a high school team. And, and it takes a while to get your feeding back – or your footing back, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, right, right. And you, and you got guys then have to get shifted to different positions and play different uh, spots, right? You, you yeah, absolutely. And there's McGue. He takes it off the left side, taken down by Caleb Bacon. 5'11", 149-pound sophomore, takes him down. And again, a good read by him, but he just was – I thought he was a little reluctant to run that one up there. He's still got three good sure, yards. Yeah. I'm sure the coaching staff's happy. But he's 6'4". Uh, if he falls forward, he's going to yeah, pick up a couple. Yeah, I think when he's a senior, yeah. he's going to hit that one hard, and that four-yard game might become six yards. Tyler Carter on the carry there. 
It's going to bring up third and about six, seven yards. Great so. read by Wilson and Looney. Uh, Looney from his linebacker position <coughs> and Wilson from this cornerback position came up there and, and made that uh, hit before the running back could get going. So great read. So Coach, Coach, um, <laughs> <laughs> Coach Cooper? Cooper, yeah, yeah, <laughs> darn it. It just, that's what happens when you get old, you forget right. stuff. <laughs> Jerry Co Cooper, Kyle Harmon, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Coach Cooper, that's what is, he was one of his things, make sure they're on their reads. And there's that score, and he yeah. goes around the left end. Didn't, did not pick, let's see if he, yeah, he picked he up the first yeah. down. The, looked like he went out a little early, but you're right, he picked up another Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, Wyatt Morgan read that one good, it just, was unable to make the, the right. tackle. He read that one right. He just couldn't get out there to to, to get Etzcorn down. He, he would have. It would have been a no gain. If he would have if he would have was able to turn it up like he was trying sure. to do, he was gone because he had the corner. And that's the difference of being four and five, five and sure. five, or eight and two. You know, eight and two, you make that tackle, and you're they're punting five and five. You're it's first down. That's that's how close this game is of winning and losing. There's Tyler Carter on a sweep around the right side. He's going to pick up five yards, but I think Evans coming back, Scott, because there's I a flag that was in the a backfield. Yep, yeah. I believe that might be on uh, <coughs> Mr. Thomas outside. He got a little bit. The problem is the running back went outside, and he had to kind of grab some jersey yep. to keep the lineman from going and making the tackle. Sometimes the linemen get busted for the holding call, but it's the, it's the running back who right. runs outside, and he's doing his best to try to help the help the running back. So they'll back that one up 10 yards. And, and he's kind of talking to his coach about, <laughs> he grabbed my jersey too, coach. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand. It doesn't help Coach Harmon. I'm sure he's not happy about it. <laughs> no, no. You can plead your case all you want, son, but right. uh, you got called for it. But, again, if he, he would have cut that inside, he had the perfect block. But instead he goes outside, and then you're grabbing to try to keep that guy and once they go across your face and you grab jersey, that's easy call for the fish to make for a hold. Here's McGew as he looks. He throws long down the left side, and his arm got hit. Yeah. And he gets picked off, picked off by number 10. That's Keegan Wilson, the 5'10 senior, gets the turnover for the Indians. And you saw that from up here, Scotty. Yeah. He, he had his man, but his arm got hit as he cocked it back. Yeah, and he put way too much air yeah. in. Coach Carpenter's kind of pleading his case. He said you had a guy out here on the flat. You know, yeah, kind of got Carter, a little yeah. greedy, and, you know, that's back to inexperience, and, you know, Coach Carpenter wants to make the safe bet. and He's got a little bit of gunslinger in he him. Does. Right? He, you know, he, he does. He does. You're so right. Uh, he's big, he's strong, he's got a great arm, and he just wants yeah. to, you know, he wants throw to that shoot. ball in there. Right. He's kind of got a little bit of Brett Fra uh, Favre in him, doesn't he? And yes, Brett he Favre does. threw a few interceptions, too, by... Here's Barry as he slings it out to the left side. He's got Jordan Banks out there as he tries to turn the corner, and he goes out of bounds. Yep. And you can see he's a lot more comfortable out there on the outside. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, get his speed out in there, green grass in front of him, not four or five big uglies in front of him. He likes to get out there and where the grass is and uh, use his <laughs> speed and get by somebody. When Ryan McGew, when he gets an off season full of yep. spending time with his receivers and his quarterback coach, and he'll get all that time and all those reps, and he'll be fine. He's a nice looking quarterback. Yeah, ball so, jumps out of his arm. Yes, it does. So Noonan, Noonan runs off the left side, and he's going to pick up another Citizens National Bank first down. I'll tell you, I, I had OG versus Shawnee a couple weeks ago, and I was really impressed on how hard he ran then, and he still does it. He, he just he runs hard. He hits the hole. 100 miles an hour, and he's running hard, and he says, you know, if you're going to hit me, I'm going to I'm going to punish you more than you're going to hurt me because well, he runs so darn hard. Inflict it. Don't take yeah, it. That's absolutely. right. Absolutely. He's a he's number one. And here comes Noonan again off the left side, and Parker Krim just missed a tackle as he yeah. tried to get him in the backfield, but a great job by him. And Noonan finds the grass and gets about five yards. Yeah, and, he, and you know, usually the first contact doesn't bring him down too no. as well because he, he got hit about at the – 37 yard line and fell, fall forward to 39. So that's a good sign of a very good running back when you don't go down on first contact. He gets one, sometimes two yards after contact. I'd love to see if, if they keep track of that, what his yards after contact would be. And both these teams are playing incredibly hard right now, and they're just playing for pride right now. Neither team has a chance at the playoffs. So here's Barry as he's going to keep it off. And again, he slips the tackle from Parker Krim. And I don't know who's blocking Parker Krim, Scott, but, <laughs> but he is not. living in the backfield right <laughs> he sure now. Sure is, and I'm sure uh, 
Chase Berry's thinking, hey, <laughs> get that Somebody. dude on the ground. I'm tired of seeing him. My goodness, I'm going to watch him play. <laughs> yeah. Just watch, circle him and watch him go up against whoever because he is doing a fantastic job. Now, he's missed the last two tackles, but that's beside the point. He's in the backfield. <laughs> right. You know, like you said, he's only a freshman. Can you imagine when he's a oh, senior, he's going to be like taking him down with his finger probably. Like, yeah. Pfft. If he's going to spend the next three years in the weight room, mm. he's going to be a force to mm. reckon with. Right. It's just think he's still, what, 14 or yeah. 15? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> he is sick. Right there he is again, yeah. Scott. He makes the tackle that time. So Parker Krim right now is just flexing his muscle. Right. And it, what the problem, too, is like he just shedded that blocker. He just two hands, threw him sideways and said, all right, I'm here to make a tackle and <laughs> cut the guy down. I mean, that that is it's, it's like Joey Bosa-esque <laughs> right. there. Nick Unbel and Joey Bosa, yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. So and he's only a freshman. <laughs> wow. Back deep for the Bulldogs, David Edscorn. And they'll be in pump formation for Shawnee with 4.45 to go here. And you're going to get Ooh. an offsides call, and that is going to yep. give Shawnee a first down. You have got to be kidding me. That's going to drive Coach Harmon bananas. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, they might call. Uh, are they going to call? Yeah, they are. They're going to call, call offsides on nope. Shawnee. Uh, legal procedure. Yeah, legal yep. procedure. Excuse yep. me. Oh, Coach Cooper's out on the field. <laughs> he <laughs> is hot ticket. Right. Brook Holder is like, whew, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and the officials are discussing it right now, and I, I, I don't think I've ever seen him change a call. Yeah, like, well, I think Cooper's arguing that he ran up into the neutral zone and uh, uh, sure, made yeah. his guy flinch. Well, that's what you and I both saw. Yeah, you're right. Let's see what they say here after discussion, see if they get it right. And they are going to say <laughs> yeah, they are going to call it on Elida, and Coach Harmon is clear out on the field. <laughs> Encroachment. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> officials were going to, going to make one of these two coaches very oh, uh, my goodness. unhappy. You could just see the disdain these two teams have for <laughs> yeah, each other. Right. Hey, you can, there's a lot of great games tonight, but I'm glad we're sitting here watching this one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So here come the Indians with 4.41 to go, down 7 to nothing to the Bulldogs. Chase Berry's in the gun. He's flanked to the right by Noonan. He's got a man in motion. He's going to fake the handoff and keep it himself, and he's going to get nothing. Actually take a loss there about a yard. Unsportsmanlike. Well, oh, no, they didn't call it. No, I thought you were right. I thought they'd call that. Boy, there, there is some heated players mm -hmm. out there right now. There's some pushing and shoving, a little extracurricular. I'm sure yeah. both coaches are going to talk to their kids at halftime and settle them down. Yeah, and, and it's starting to get a little chippy, and, yeah. and they got a cooler heads need to prevail here. You don't want to get yourself a, a personal foul here no. and cost your team 15 yards. Our guy Kevin Late McGuire. Substitution coming yeah, in Kevin here. McGuire just come off the field, took his helmet off, and he's going to sit on the bench, and you wonder if he's not, got some kind of injury. There's another carry on the left side. Earl's coming in late, too. Uh, Travis Atkins is coming back. He was the guy that got in late and then come right back out. I don't know. And it's going to bring up third and eight from the 46. The clock continues to run. 342 to go. Bulldogs lead seven to nothing over the, the visiting Shawnee Indians. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Kraft Stadium here at Elida High School. Yeah, and Barry's kind of two or three times has, has faked that jet sweep yes, yeah. look and pulled it back and ran it. And it's, I'll just be see if they're going to set something up later. That he's going to then hand it off. And here's Barry as he's Ooh, under pressure. He finds his play. man. Nope. No, he and didn't. They're saying Looks, no. Yeah, his intended target Carter was Faye. number 20, Carter Fay. Yeah, boy, he was under heavy pressure. And sure he was. got lit up by number 22, Brady Kirk. He come from clear across the field. Scott got to hit him hard. Right. And it's going to bring up fourth and eight from the 48. Faye's kind of come up a little gimpy, too. I saw that. Great crowd on hand tonight for week 10. The, the home st stands are packed, and the visitors are about more than three-quarters packed. So a lot of people out here for this rivalry what, game. What I like is to see that big student yeah, section great, over there. It? Yes, yeah. it is. And almost, we almost yeah, see again. another blocked punt. Here come the Bulldogs as they'll be taken down in about, uh, about the 28-yard line. Carter Faye must not have been hurting too bad to get down there and make a tackle, but it's just, just <laughs> coming up a little ginger there. 3.09 to go. 
Delighted Bulldogs lead seven to nothing. Good played game so far. Yeah. Well played game, excuse me. Uh, Bulldogs scored early in the first quarter on a, a lot of running plays up the middle and a, and a big pass interference play. And since then, they've held the Indians in check. So just a fantastic effort on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and I was kind of watching, and I seen old Kevin McGuire talking to his coaches. I don't know if he got uh, stepped on because he pointed down to his shin and his hand. So I don't know if he was down on the ground and got uh, accidentally stepped on or the pile or something. But that would be a huge loss for the Bulldogs. Yeah. Here comes McGew and the Dogs as they try to add on to that 7 nothing score. Brady Kirk goes off the right side, maybe a gain of one. <coughs> Excuse me. Second and nine from the 27. I, I would think, and, and just me, because I'm, I'm aggressive when I watch a football game, you, I want to see Elida pick it up a little bit, and, 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 and yeah. you know, with the, with 2.43 to go, but maybe, you know, maybe they just want to secure the, you know, 7 nothing halftime lead, and maybe they're happy with that. Right, or they don't want to turn it over yeah, more right. quarterback sure. into, like, a speed situation oh, no. and make a decision unlike the, the one that he threw into. Yep. Double coverage when he had a guy in the in the safety. Uh, yeah, I absolutely see both sides of that. Faye again. Wow. Brady Kirk was taken down by Faye. Shed his blocker and got through there. Impressive. So Carter Faye, the six five big man, just breaks through that line. Shawnee's going to take a timeout. So here. Shawnee's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with two fourteen to go. Seven to nothing. Elida leads. We'll be right back. Back here at Kraft Stadium in Elida High School, 2.14 to go. Elida Bulldogs continue to lead 7 to nothing. It's third and 13 from the 26. Magoo's in the gun. He's got two to the left. He's going to roll off to his left. He throws downfield and overshoots his intended target. That was number, <clears throat> excuse me, number seven for Elida. Jackson Cobalt. That's a good read. He just overthrew it. And again, that's a tough pass. For anyone to go to it, your to left the other side, and yeah, throw you're it, right. right? That is, you're just, absolutely that's a right. very tough pass on the run to throw. If he probably would have been better off, he could set his feet and and then drive behind the ball to get it to his receiver. Just threw that one a little, kind of floated on him a little bit. It's kind of is a little high tonight. Maybe it's a little nerves, right? Sure, Maybe. could be, could be. Yeah, big rivalry game. It's his first uh, rivalry game start. So Friday night, beautiful night. Fair Ooh. catch called and bobbled, but they get it back, it looks like to me. Yeah. Uh, I are they yes. yeah, Atkins yeah, I was try say, to it. take it away, but <laughs> Shawnee, the player, was down when he called for the fair catch. Wilson, yeah. Keegan Wilson was there, caught it, and kind of came out of his hands a little bit, and then he got his hand on the ball. And as soon as he's down and has a hand on top of the ball, it's dead ball. So 2.02 to go. First and 10 from the 26th. The Indians are going to try to put one in here before the halftime. I think, I think the Indians need to get their speed out on the outside. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I just think I just think running up the middle is setting something up for later. I, I'd just be curious to see if they're saving something for the second half because they've been really, really running hard up the middle uh, to see if – to get to the outside. See if they're setting something up here. So here's – <clears throat> Barry in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's got Jordan Banks off to his left. He's going to keep it himself. He goes off the left side. He's going to pick up nine big yards. So a nice run by Chase Barry. And one man away from taking that one yeah, to the house. Sure is. Quick hitter. A good job. A little trap block. It's good to see uh, McGuire back in. So it must not have right. been too much damage there. I know he has, looks like he has a little uh, brace there on that right shin. So maybe, maybe it's a little sore to begin with and somebody hit it. Here's Barry in the gun. He's got Keegan Wilson to the far left. He's going to hand the ball to Jordan Banks. He goes off the right side, and he's going to pick up a Citizens National Bank first down. So they're moving the ball in yes, two plays are. there. There's about 16 yards in two plays, and that's going to put him at the 42-yard line with 127 to go. Start the clock here. and uh, Shawnee still has two timeouts, so still plenty of time. Were you surprised Elida took those two timeouts in the yeah. first quarter? And I was very surprised. Elida has a receiver. Okay, now they noticed it. <laughs> it kind of went over to Coach Cooper and got the play and then kind of hung out there. And Chase Berry cuts what it back. Good and job to set up his blocks there. Very patient, was yeah. he not? Yeah. Not a typical 
aka quarterback. No, that you're was, right. That was a move a, a season running back makes. This injured player. You got an injured player down. We're going to let them attend to the injured player. When we come back, we'll have 101 left on the clock. Eli the lead 7 0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our scoreboard is provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lyman Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lyman and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. Yeah, the injured player was number 12, Zach Noonan, who had to get taken off or some of his linemen come out there. He was holding his left leg, was kind of stiff. Yeah, and I don't did know. Not look good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that young man is okay. There's Jordan Banks off the left side. He's going to keep it himself as he picks up another Citizens National Bank first down. So the Indians are moving the ball, Scott. Yes, they are. And, uh, you're right. Let's just hope that Zach Noonan gets to come back in this game because he is a lot of offense. He sure is. And uh, Shawnee's going to call a timeout. So I got, it looks like there's a couple uh, medical personnel around uh, Noonan. So. <clears throat> We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. Also, Season 18 of the Sports Report started Friday night. Join Patrick Camler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. They do a great job of covering high school sports. I've been out there and done that show with them a few times, and it is a fun time, and they do a great job. There is an army of people out there, <laughs> Scott. I'm not kidding you. There is an army of people running scores and looking up stuff and making copies and typing stuff up, and I, I can't keep up. <laughs> Yeah, it takes a, takes a village, doesn't it? It sure does. First and 10 from the 23. The Indians trying to put it in the end zone with 50 seconds to go. Chase Berry, he's got Jordan Banks to his left. He's going to roll left. He's looking for a receiver. He's going to throw down left side. He's got a man out there, and it's a touchdown. Yeah, great catch. What a catch. And I'm going to try to identify that receiver out there. It's Keegan Wilson, I think. Keegan Wilson, and he just made a fantastic yeah. catch. And that's going to put the Shawnee Indians on the board. That, my friends, is a Fat Jack's Pizza touchdown. Get the Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Yeah. Great pass. You know, we've been talking about Chase Berry being the running back, running back, running he, back. Nice. He put all the money was, there. That was a beautiful 35-yard pass. And, a nice spiral. He put it right on his hands. That was a heck of a pass. It sure was. He floated that ball up there, and it, it looked sure did. effortlessly. Right. So, we, yeah, you're right. We talk about him running, but that was a <laughs> nice throw. Good job, Chase Berry. Yeah. And so here's the after the extra point attempt here. Snap is back. Hold is good. Kick is up, and it is good. So with 42 seconds to go until halftime, the Shawnee Indians have tied it up 7-7. Seven to seven. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Kraft Stadium, where with 42 seconds to go, the Elida Bulldogs are tied up with the Shawnee Indians as they drive the length of the field and convert on a 35-yard pass. Make it 7-7. Seven to seven. We'll see if Elida tries to uh, go fast or if they just take a knee and head into halftime tied. Wouldn't want it any other way in a <laughs> offsides. <laughs> They're going to call offsides here. Offsides on Shawnee. That'll back it up five yards. I, you know what? I, I think Scott. It's going to depend on the on the return here. Let's uh, yeah. Let's see. Now that obviously that'll helps. Help, yeah. Right. That'll help to see. <clears throat> I mean, if you can get that ball to midfield with 42 seconds to go, you, you got a okay. shot to at least go for a field goal. And one one timeout left at the score. Right. Right. Boards. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so here we go. We'll re-kick it. 42 seconds to go. Yeah. And there are coaches and fans and people around here with shorts on it. They look yeah. comfortable. They, right. It's not cold at all. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> How, when when do you see that in week 10 I that know, no one's right. in like winter coats and right. hats and gloves normally? And now the late great Aaron Matthews, he wore those yeah, shorts man. all year round. Yeah, so. you're right. <laughs> he would be the only one, That's right? That's right. That's right. 
So they'll field the ball at the 10-yard line. Let's see where he brings it up to. He gets across the 25 to the 30, to the 35 to the 40, and a nice return. Let's see. Number three, David Etzcorn brings it up. and Stern makes a tackle. They'll set, set up shop at the 40. And he was about uh, breaking one tackle away from they taking that to the house. You're absolutely right. So 36 seconds to go. Seven to seven. The free WSN score app is the easiest, easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. So here we go, partner. Let's see what Elida yeah. decides to do with 36 seconds to go. They've got McGoo in the gun, and they've got uh, Jackson Cobalt wide to the left. Yeah, I would wait for uh, Tory Thomas to get on the field, too. <laughs> Here comes Amari Walsh as he tries to get the corner. And that's the first time all night we've called number six his number, the talented freshman. A little bit of uh, step in his giddy up there, man. When he got around the corner, he's seen, he's seen green grass and like, okay, here we go. And that'll bring up another Citizens National Bank first down with 30 seconds to go. Yeah. Oh, they've been defending Brady Kirk and David Etzcorn all night. And then all of a sudden, here comes Amari Walsh, a little a speed guy coming in and turns the corner. And, man, yeah, they got all guys kinds over of over here don't know what they're doing. they got to call a timeout because this uh, one guy keeps <laughs> going back and forth. Yeah. Now they got it. Now they, they got said it. first down, <laughs> and then he went the other way. They think well, they're going towards <laughs> – Oh, just no. got a little confused there. <laughs> yeah. He got the 10 yards there. We'll get it. Yeah. Here comes Etzcorn as he tries to get the left side. And he, oh, he fumbled. Oh, he fumbled the ball. But lucky he went gonna, out of bounds. They're going to keep the clock running. He yep. didn't get a – or did he? Oh, oh no. Elida's going to get a timeout. Okay. Yeah. 23 seconds to go. So, I got the ball here at the 49. And, uh, Scott, let me ask you this. Uh, and we, we, we've talked about this on my radio show several times in the last couple weeks. Are you a fan of the expanded 16-team playoff? There's a lot of controversy on this whole well, subject. I mean, I can see what the state did this before. I mean, it's sure it's you know, to get you more know. teams yeah. and yep. and what and other factors Absolutely. why they did this. But you know, if you're an old school guy, back <coughs> I'm going to date myself. Oh, here we go. <laughs> when only Was Laverne like, and Shirley on that? <laughs> yeah, right. In happy days. That's right. So you know, only four teams got in. And right. It was I not, that. Now there's like seven divisions, and uh -huh. back then there was what three, maybe four. Mm -hmm. Yep. So total of sixteen teams made it in there, and you know, my school, there was several times we were nine and one, eight and two, never got Didn't in, get in, never right. get in. Now you know, I, I think sixteen's too many. Sure. Twelve might have been all right because I, I think maybe sixteen and a winning record because there's teams getting in at three and seven. Three and and seven that's, yeah. that's not right either. No. I don't think. Here's McGue as he throws off the left side. And he's got Keaton Hockey out and there. And it depends on what region you're in. Now, I mean, if you look at, do you look at uh, Wapox region? Right. Oh my, or St. Mary, excuse me. Yeah. They have the Tartars. Yep. They have uh, yep. uh, Marion Elgin or Pleasant. Mm -hmm. And they got like three former state champions all moved down to Division Three, and they all stuck them in that region. <laughs> like, holy cow. So yeah, St. Mary's do? wins week one. <laughs> They're going to Glenville and playing the Tartars with, <laughs> I think, five Buckeye recruits right. on it. <laughs> Here's McGew in the gun. He looks off to the left side. Ooh. He's got, oh. That and might have been offensive was, pass interference they because. Were, yeah, they were holding on to each other, were they not? And they were holding on. There's my man, J.J. Spiker. He was getting held, and he's like, come on, man. <laughs> kept me from an interception. Tyler Carter had some of his jersey, and, and Spiker had some of his jersey. <laughs> yeah, so right. 15 seconds ago, second and 10 from the 38. Uh, you're, you know, you called it really correct, Scott. Magoo's a gunslinger. He just yeah. fires that ball out there. This is He's in his element right now. He yeah. knows they're passing yeah, this, every time. <laughs> you're right. This is like, hey, this is what I. This is why I'm a quarterback. This is what I'm I signed not, up for. Yeah, I'm not here to hand a dang ball off. I'm here to <laughs> freaking sling it, baby. He's got Cobalt to the left Ooh, and hockey to the Oh, they almost – oh. Yeah. That might have been uh, – Did somebody reach out and touch the ball? I think the, the center might have, like, got a – False start. Yeah, it's like the – didn't snap it right. It got stuck a little bit. <laughs> Five yards. And you look at Shawnee playing that zone at three deep in the back side, and they've got a yeah. high, one safety up on high. Single high safety. Yeah. It, they're, in a, they're not going to let anybody get no, past them. You're it's going to keep right. everything in front of them and, and make them kick or at least try to – 30- or 40-yard field goal. And this is where McGue's got to be able to see over those sure. linebackers and find that middle seam and right. hope that they can get out of bounds. And they're rushing three right at the most. He's going to throw to the left side, and he's going to overshoot the intended target, Keaton yeah. Hockey. 
That's going to make it 10 seconds to go. And Third Keegan and Wilson was right there. They're keeping everything in front of them. They're breaking hard on the ball because they're not going to let them any, get any run after the catch or, or even whatever. They get them, they're going to get them to the ground and keep everything in front of them. I'm, I'm sure Coach Cooper said, do not get beat deep. And here, let's see what Coach Harmon does with 10 seconds to go. If he'll take a knee or try to because you basically have one play here yeah. unless you can get it out of bounds. Well, not only that, but then you you're, you still might have to punt it on fourth down. And why sure. take a chance of getting it blocked? Here's McGew. We know we've seen the that. Middle. He fires to the left side. Oh, what a, a beautiful catch. catch by Jackson Koval. He gets two feet <laughs> yeah. in, and he gets out of bounds. Right. Looked like the NFL. <laughs> right. He Half his body was over into the orange. What a catch. What a fantastic catch by yeah. Jackson Koval. Yeah, and – you're right. Magoo can get this in the end zone for sure from here, 32 yards. Throw that off his back foot and get it in there. See what he so does. He's like, here. perfect. Now I got a shot. <laughs> now I can do this. <laughs> I mean, I got, he's probably thinking, I got it from the 52, coach. But <laughs> yeah, Coach might, Harmon's a little yeah. <laughs> hesitant there. Right, but he said, but you know, now coach might throw something at him. Here's Magoo as he goes to the outside, and they get another play. Yeah. And that will bring up two seconds to go. 28, so it's a 45-yarder if they try it. Yeah, they're going to try it. They're going to try it. Here we yep. go. Great job by uh, oh, Magoo to get goodness. that out quickly and off to the side. This will Coach be Carpenter a, gives them a high five on their way out. A 42-yard attempt for number 31, Grant Hardeman, as he lines yeah, it up here. More like a, It looks like 34. It's like, yeah, 34-yarder. Okay. Kick is up. Ooh, it's blocked. blocked. See, this blocked. is blocked, and that is the – Yeah, that so, was my worst fear. <laughs> corralled by the Bulldogs, yeah. and that will bring the first half to an end. So after one half, the Atlanta Bulldogs and Shawnee Indians are tied at seven. We come back, we'll have our Lout Chiropractic halftime adjustments. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Elida High School. We're at halftime. We're all knotted up at seven apiece. Our halftime adjustments are sponsored by Lout Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Lout Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Lout Chiropractic is our halftime adjustment sponsor. Scott, we take a look at both these teams. Elida, the home team. What do they need to do to, to keep the momentum going tied up at seven apiece? Yeah, I just think offensively and defensively, they just – you know, they're, they're really close. Just somebody has to make a play, right? Yep. right? they got to yeah, make absolutely. a play. Maybe in the passing game, they got to get somebody out in space in the passing, make a play in the passing game. And and defensively, I think, you know, we, we had talked about Mr. Grimm being in the backfield He was a lot, living back there. But, you know, they did elude him a lot. He's sure. got to maybe make a play and make a 10-yard a sack, an 8-yard sack. You know, this game is too even. Sure. First person, I think they make a play, offense or defensively. And then on, the, on the other hand, I, I, it's kind of the same thing for Shawnee. And they make got a, a play. Yeah, they got right? a late score there in the second half. Yeah, and, the second quarter, and they me. made it off the pass. Yes. Right. So they kind of made a, a play on the passing game. So I think Shawnee is going to want to get. Like I said, we talked about in the broadcast earlier. They've been really pounding the ball inside. I think they're trying to set up, you know, pound, pound, pound inside to get those. Fast guys on the outside. I, I just, I just got a feeling that they're wanting to get something on the outside. So I think Shawnee Mays will, will attack on the outside, and uh, like you said, then defensively is just to try to bottle them up and make that make Elida be a passing team, and hopefully they can get the sophomore quarterback to make a few mistakes. So great halftime adjustments there by Scott Mag. Halftime adjustment sponsor is Lout Chiropractic. So Shawnee is kicking off to Elida. Amari Walsh and David Etzcorn back deep. And this is Etzcorn who gets it at the 15, tries to cut through the middle, and he's taken down. He'll be down around the 29-yard line. So that's where they'll set up shop. And the young Mr. Ryan McGue, the 6'4 sophomore, the gunslinger, as Scott Mag calls him. <laughs> he is not afraid to throw that no, ball down the no. field. He just remind he has a little bit of Brett Favre <laughs> esque to him. I mean, he just <laughs> likes to sling it. Uh, I'm sure Coach Carpenter might maybe put a little bit of zip on the ball a few times. I know he was very upset when he had his uh, interception because he had somebody sure. in the flat. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> as a gunslinger, you don't settle for a five yard out. You know, you're going for the deep ball. So McGee will be in the gun. He's got Jackson Cobalt off to the left side. I think they might 
Somebody different back there. No, you you know you you're right. Henderson, Larkin Henderson. Back Larkin there. Henderson, the senior, yeah. the starting quarterback for the first four games of the year, is back from an injury. Yeah, and they have got to be ecstatic about this. Yes, and Mrs. Henderson gives the ball off to Brady Kirk, Brady Kirk as he goes down, and they're going to let him have let that him one play. play. Yeah, for good a for him. Great, great job oh, by wow. Coach Carpenter to get him out there and run his play. That's impressive, and he's still kind of holding that he shoulder is. a little bit, and uh, you know, I, I'm sure that is painful for that young man because he's done a lot for this football team, and uh, for, it feels so bad for him. He's yeah. injured two years in a row. That's just tough. Well, and that's what high school football right there is yep. about. And what a what a great gesture! Almost picked off. Yes, Brady Kirk gets it in the backfield, and he swung that pass out. And he's gonna go across the thirty. About the 34-yard line, but uh, he kind of threw that backwards, Scott, and almost picked yeah, off. Yeah, right. It was. I think it was. Um, Faye was out there, almost got that one. We've been talking a lot yeah. about him. Yes, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's said everywhere. He's been every all over the field. And that's going to bring up third and four from the 33-yard line. Beautiful night here tonight. Sure Had the is. windows open at halftime, and I'm about to open them again because yes. there was a nice breeze, breeze. coming through yeah, there. So yeah, go right ahead. We'll leave that open there. Absolutely. Hopefully it doesn't knock our stuff off here. <laughs> Here's McGew as he hands the ball off up the middle, and they are not going to pick up a first down as they are swarmed under by that Shawnee defense, yep. number 55 for the Indians. Does a great job. Meeks. And that is, you're right, that is Isaiah Meeks, the 5'10", 178-pound junior. What a great stop. You know, way to, way to set the tone for the uh, Shawnee defense. And the last time, e Elida came out in the game and they ran the ball right down their throat and got a touchdown. So good uh, good adjustments by the defensive staff, coaching staff by the Indians. So here's the punt. Little low line driver taken back at the 30-yard line. He's just going to take it out of bounds. That's number 10 for the Indians. And that is Keegan Wilson. So that's where the Indians will set up shop there. They'll be led on offense again by Chase Berry. Had a nice first half, a beautiful touchdown pass in the first half. We commented about that. He just zinged that ball down the field. He sure did. And, you know, we, we've been really commenting how well he runs, but that pass was on the money and he had a lot of nice spiral on it. So he can throw the ball a little bit. I can see why Coach Cooper put him back there as a quarterback. First and 10 from the 37. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Elida High School, week 10 of the high school season. Neither of these teams will be in the postseason play, but they're playing for pride. Big rivalry game here. They've got one in motion. Barry's going to keep it. Fake the handoff to Banks, and they'll go off the left side, be taken down at about the 41-yard line, hit by number two for the Elida Bulldogs, Seth Sharp, 5'11", junior. Banks kind of led him through the hole, kind of like played a fullback-ish there. And when you say Banks as a fullback, you mean you're a lot of ish in there because he's not a very big kid. <laughs> no, I think well, yeah. at least he did take on a blocker. I tell you, he's got some guts. He, he does. Right, he's not a big kid, but he's not afraid to run. He runs hard up the middle, and he does do, do his blocking you're up right, there. Not so, afraid to, yeah, he, as they say, it stick his nose in there, is he? Right. No, he's not. <laughs> Tough young man. And here comes Banks off the right side as he's looking for running room. Pick up nice yards. Oh, the fumbled. ball gets fumbled, and it's picked up by Elida, and there's the first turnover of the second half, and that's a big one at midfield. Guess who? Who was it that got the recovery? The Grim Reaper got <laughs> the that The Grim Reaper, Parker yeah. Grim. Did not see him down there, but I'm not surprised. He's everywhere. Yeah. He's got a nose for the football. He sure does, Scott. He's going to be a fantastic player for this school. And he is only a freshman. He's going to get bigger, stronger, and faster. And he's what, what a great kid. I interviewed him a couple weeks ago. And just fantastic. Pleasant, smiled the whole time. And just a pleasant young man to be around. He doesn't know how good he's going to be. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. No, he, he doesn't. has no idea. No, he does not. And, you know, he's got two – he's 215 in that frame. And he is a man. <laughs> yes, he is. As a freshman, I – I'd be a hate to. I would yeah. not want to be the guy that blocks him he, when he's he, a senior. Yeah, he will be on a lot of radars from college scouts in the next couple of years. He you really bet. will. They'll find him. So here's a handoff to Ed Scorn as he tries to go around the right side, and he is hit hard and taken down. Dragging people by number 45, and that's Akias Richardson for the Indians. Good job by Ed Scorn to keep running hard to carrying guys. He got hit line, the original line of scrimmage and carried guys three more. Three, four more yards down the field. Tough running. 
So second and six with 8.40 to go. The clock continues to run. Seven to seven from Elida High School. It's like they, they hurry up to play slow. <laughs> right. It's like you know, they get to the line of scrimmage. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do is that you know, Shoney has to get set and they got to call their defenses quick and then they can make adjustments yep. of what they're doing. Here comes Kirk as yep. he tries to pick up the first down. It looks like he's going to be about a yard short. Are they saying they're giving the first down? Did, did they say first down? No, I... Can't be first Can't down. Can't be first down. No, I was going to yeah. say. What's he pointing first down for? I, I have no idea. <laughs> you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we both look at the stick, and the other right. officials looking at, at the other guys saying it's not a first down. Right. Unless they move the ball, but I, I don't know what they're doing. <coughs> he's he's kind of arguing over here. He's going to talk to Coach Cooper, the official, the sideline. I don't know if he's arguing about maybe a sideline warning or something. I'm not sure. And no, Coach Cooper's pointing to the ball, saying it's not a first down. And, I, yeah. and I, he's absolutely right. And the other officials are kind of perplexed because the ball's behind the sticks. Yeah. So I, I, I don't understand why he's signaling for a first down. And now they're talking it over. There's absolutely no yeah. way where the ball is marked right now that that is a first down. So that'll bring up thir it's third and one, one on the scoreboard. Yeah, and it looks like third and one from up here. Too. <laughs> it is absolutely third and one. <laughs> the ball is placed at the 45. The marker is at the 44. Yeah. So they're going to keep it at third down, it looks like to me, and yeah. finally work that out. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It happens. We just highlight it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. As a coach, you get a little That's angry. Right. But, oh, you know, we, I, we bo yeah, we both went into coach mode. Did you see that? <laughs> right, right. Look at what us go. What are you doing? Here's Magoo yeah. in the backfield. He's in the gun. He takes the ball himself, hands it off. This is Ed scoring. Tyler Carter, excuse me, as he tries to go around. And he does get another Citizens National Bank first down. Now, he can mark a first down now, Scott. We're, we're going to give sure, him permission. Sure again. <laughs> That'll keep the clock running at eight minutes to go. First and ten from the 40. We're all tied up at seven apiece here. So the Bulldogs have ran Seth Sharp, David Edscorn, Tyler Carter, Amari Walsh, Jackson Cope. They've had Larkin Henderson on the field. So they have everybody by committee, all hands on deck tonight. Yeah, right. Here comes Ooh. Brady Kirk, and he is hit hard in the backfield. I don't think he got a yard there, Scott. No, he didn't. He, great job by Boy. Looney coming from his linebacker. He was like a bullet, yes, he man. Was. He was flying up there, made a hard hit. This wow. defensive front for the Indians, Isaiah Meeks, Shandon Sewell, Akias Richardson, and Carter Fay have really played a good ball game tonight. Yes. And they, they've had to play a good game because Elida has put the ball on the ground. Yeah, and, and you know, they're coming and they're matching that physicality. Control that line of scrimmage is the key there um, by Elida and, and Shawnee's want nothing to do with that. Here's Magoo as he hands off the ball to David Edscorn as he tries to sweep around the right side. Pick up a gain of about four yards. That'll bring up third and about four. And you can see the, the Bulldog linemen. They know that if they stay on their blocks, Edscorn just needs to crack. He does, you're right. Because he runs so darn hard and he does a great job of cutting back. So they've got to stay on their block because he may come back where you're blocking. So uh, give these linemen, as you mentioned, they're doing a great job up front. They sure. I'll tell you what, this is an evenly matched game yes. on both sides of the ball. Here comes Brady Kirk again as he gets a tough yard, maybe two yards, and that's going to bring up another Citizens National Bank first down. It's, uh, Ed's Corn and Kirk uh, running tandem here is uh, – Starting to wear on the uh, Shawnee Indians. Well, and we'll yeah. see what that does later on in the fourth quarter because they keep pounding, keep pounding, keep pounding on them. And, you know, after a while, you're going to get tired. A lot of these guys are playing both ways as well. Absolutely. Those hits in the first and second quarter aren't big, but the third yeah. and fourth quarter, they come Absolutely. hurting a little bit. Right. So here comes McGoo. He hands the ball off to David Etzcorn as he gets to the right side. There's that track. Yeah. <laughs> Knocks He's, him out of bounds yeah. at about the 12 yard line. Good Not job by Daly out there on the outside. He made some great blocks in that opening drive to spring some of the running backs. He had a heck of a job on that defensive end slash linebacker out there. Now we're getting into the uh, vision yeah. problems here, Scott. Yeah. Can you see over there a little yeah, bit? I can see to the 10-yard <laughs> line. That's about it. I, if they go out to the boundary side, I can't see anything. Our viewers really. at home can see. we got great <laughs> camera people here. So here comes Magoo as he hands the ball off to – that's Ed's corn. Yeah. 
It's good. Stay in between the numbers, my man. That'll bring. Oh, Ooh, and here comes a late, late flag. flag. I just wonder mm. if there wasn't some extracurricular there, or was it a hold that he just didn't call? Uh, yeah, could have been in a timely manner. Personal foul. Personal foul Ooh. against Shawnee. Not real sure what that's about, but that's not going to make a, Coach Maybe Cooper. a late hit or somebody coming in with a helmet. Could I didn't be. really see. Wish we had the replay here. <clears throat> Our scoreboard is provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And you're right, Scott. The Bulldogs are in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor is brought to you by T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit T&D Interiors on Allentown Road. T&D Interiors is our red zone sponsor. Yeah, so personal foul. Yeah, what well, did on, you catch the call? There? It's just a personal foul on uh, number eight, uh, Caleb Beckham. Not real sure what it was. Yeah, defensive back. I don't know what came in late. I don't know. So here comes Magoo in the gun. He's got one to the left. He's going to hand the ball off. He's going to around the right side. Let's see, that scorn is just swarmed under. Have to look over your shoulder down there. <laughs> <laughs> Got about a 10 degree angle yeah, from right. my seat <laughs> to that spot where he ran out of bounds. And we are, so we are, tough yeah, we are not complaining about our no, cut. This is a no, beautiful it, press absolutely. box. It's just the angle we're at is kind of tough. So yeah. <laughs> they do a great, they that's, treat us great out here. They that's really the do. the only bad spot down there yeah, on the right. right. If, yeah. Anywhere else, both sides in that, in the corners. You're right. Yep. But other than that, we have a beautiful view from up here. So here comes McGew in the gun. He's got one to the far left, one to the right. He's got no one in the backfield. He's got a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself and go up the middle and not get much of a no. gain there. And that's going to bring up about fourth and one from the seven-yard line. So Carter Fay again from his defensive end to get there and knock that one down. Not much of a decision here. No, no you got you got to <laughs> go for this one, I think. Fourth and two from the He's eight. going to kick the field goal, Scott. Oh, wow. I'm surprised here. Yeah, me too. I thought he'd go for it. But his defense is playing well. Yeah, absolutely. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. But so. kind of what we saw in the halftime adjustments, you know, making a play right <laughs> here. Right. I, I would count that at fourth and two uh, That's making, inside right. the ten. That's making a play to win the game, right? Go win the game. So here comes Grant Hardeman. He's going to try to tack <laughs> on three. Let's see if he can just snap his back. Hold his good in the kick. Ooh. is. Did barely. It, get it I barely, barely got barely over. My goodness, it yeah. just scooted over the crossbar. Sure did. So at the five-minute mark, the third quarter, the Atlanta Bulldogs tack on three more. They lead 10 to 7. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Craft Stadium here at Elida High School where the Elida Bulldogs just put on a field goal to take a 10 to 7 lead and at the break Scott and I were talking about is that going to be enough to win this game and we both feel like uh, we're pretty aggressive I think we would went for it but I'm not faulting coach Harmon he got the no. points and that's right. what's the important thing right he got he got he got the points that he needed right he maybe has a lot of faith in his defense well, and maybe the adjustments great. absolutely right, that last uh, last possession they were playing really well so maybe he's going to lean on his defense and and uh, take the points and and uh, hopefully come away victorious so Elida kicks off here to Shawnee. Deep kick, fielded at about the four-yard line. Here comes Jordan Banks. He tries to cut to the middle. He's taken down somewhere around the 30-yard line. That's where the Indians will start out with 4.52 to go. <clears throat> Danny Hilbert, Scott Mag from Elida High School, week 10 of the Ohio High School football season coming to an end for a lot of area teams. And for a lot of area teams, they'll move on next week. We see a lot of teams in our area. Northwest yeah. Ohio is, I don't care what you say, it is by far the best for high school sports. Right. Uh, probably check the website to find out what games we're going right. to do. It probably won't, I was be out, say. won't be updated probably till I think, the official uh, pairings come yeah. out Sunday afternoon or yeah. come out Saturday night maybe. Yeah, but I can promise you we will be covering yes. a lot of games next Friday and Saturday night. So I agree. Here comes Chase Berry. He's got Jordan Bank to his left. He's got one man in motion. He's going to hand the ball to Banks. He tries to go around the right side. He's looking for some running room. He cuts back. He's going to pick up about four yards. So nice run by Jordan Banks. Good job by the Elida Bulldog defense. String that out because you don't want him any cutback lanes. And, they, they, you know, he did cut back, and there was two guys waiting for him. So great pursuit by the linebackers and, and the opposite side cornerbacks to not allow him to cut that one back. Good, good piece of coaching, and I'm sure some film watching uh, during the week by the Bulldog defense. 
That'll bring up second and five from the 35. This is Barry in the gun. He's got Jordan Banks to his right, and he's got a man in motion. He's going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself following Jordan Banks, and he's going to be taken down in the backfield. And let's see, number 62 for the Elida Bulldogs. Luke Alexander, great job by him. Yeah, he he yeah. kind of did like a cut in front of the face. He, he, right. I, I don't know what they call that is when they go at an angle. Yes. He took an angle, and the angle that he took was exactly in the path because the guard was pulling, and he kind of maybe went right behind him and, and basically got to the quarterback before the uh, pulling guard could get off. Uh, I'll tell you, Scott, it is so apropos that the old saying about leverage and staying low, and he lied his front seven. They just stay so low. And they just get leverage and get underneath those blocks, and they do a great job. They sure do. And you got Parker Krim on this right side playing the DN's position. And he's a trouble for he's a troublemaker for the Indians. Yeah, they've been double teaming, and they still fought through that. Here's Chase Barry. Oh, Is nice. He, oh, oh, and, what uh, a catch! Oh no. No, they're going to say no. And I was watching Parker Krim the entire time, and how they did not get a hold call on that play. Parker Krim had blown by his yeah. man. And there was two guys. He won by two guys. Yeah. But there's a flag out here. The flag back by back. the back judge is going to call probably a sideline warning, I bet. Yeah, they're, they're pointing over to the pointing side. to the Shawnee sidelines. Yeah. See what they call here. Pass interference on the Indians. Hmm. They're going to call offensive pass interference on the Shawnee Indians. Yeah. Coach Cooper is not happy. Yeah. We've seen this dance a few times tonight. Coach we Cooper, sure he, he wants this one bad. And I don't blame him. Yeah. These are two good coaches and uh, fiery coaches. I, I I love to see this competition. Yeah. So they're going to move it back. Uh, uh, conversation. Pass interference on the offense. Number 20. John Stocker DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Ida Bulldogs. John Stocker DDS providing dental care for high school sports fans. Dr. John Stocker is our premier sponsor. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Third and 20. So Shawnee comes into this game, Scott, winning two in a row. Boy, wouldn't they love to spoil yeah. Elida's senior night and uh, take home a third victory in a row. And not only that, those three wins propels you into the oh, offseason, right? You, got, you guys might be lifting a little bit harder. And, ooh, going, that's a nice ball. Ooh, Chase just, Berry. Just a little bit from Keegan Wilson. Just out, just overthrew him by about a yard. He had that was a great there. ball, though. It was. And, I mean, You're he put right. it where in a spot where only Keegan could go get it. You're so right, Scott. He put it right on the money. And, uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Keegan was double teamed. Sure was. I, I just look at that as he's got confidence in Keegan Wilson to go yeah, up and get the get ball. It, right. He did one that made the touchdown grab. So it's going to bring up fourth and twenty from the twenty. So Shawnee, the drive stalls and they will punt. And that there's a perfect example of one uh, one penalty just destroying yep. the drive. Ooh. And there's a bad kick off the side of the foot. Yeah, unfortunately. It's going to roll to the 40-yard line, and that's where the Bulldogs will take over. And Coach Harmon yeah, is just screaming at his right. kids to get them fired right. up. He understands that, you know, one play here, they make a play, you know, maybe put this ball in the end zone. That might be enough to win this game. Well, Go out and win this, right? And this now, is yeah, and now, Scott, it, it, if it. he can go down and get another field goal, it makes sure. that, or that first field goal look that much more important. Right. So, But, I mean, you got you got a short field. you got coming off of – Shawnee's kind of reeling a little bit. Penalty and the, the punt off the side. And, you know, I feel bad for the punter because he's been booming them he all has. night. He's been fantastic. He's been tonight. fantastic. And, you know, the one that he didn't get, uh, under kind of big, huge play there. Here's Brady Kirk off the left side. He's going to get about three to four yards. He get thrown forward. Yeah. He's going to pick up maybe five yards because right. he got thrown forward. So I, I saw <laughs> both of those running backs, him and uh, Ed Scorn, none of them guys, they don't fall backwards. A lot of times they're getting one or two yards going forward. And there's <laughs> Ryan Magoo was looking over at his coach and he was making the throwing motion like, hey, let me let me sling it, <laughs> yeah, coach. Right. My <laughs> arm's hurt. I'm tired of freaking uh, handing this ball off. I really like that kid's mentality. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, we're going to be talking about him for the next couple years. Right. He's he like, is really a good player. <laughs> he's like, coach, I didn't become a quarterback to hand <laughs> it off, man. <laughs> Good coach Lord Har gave me an arm to throw it. If Coach Harmon could hear us up here, he'd be like, guys, don't do this to me. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> 
<laughs> Let me coach that young man. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> There's a handoff up to the right side. They'll pick up maybe one or two for Brady Kirk. That'll bring up third and about a long five from the 37-yard line. 2 yep. nine to go. But you know what? It's a lot easier coaching up here because we can be wrong. <laughs> nobody You're nobody right. will remember. But, you know, if he's wrong, heck yes. He's <laughs> every coffee shop in, in right. my <laughs> What's the show? The, what's, the, yeah. They're talking. Do you see what coach did last night? <laughs> oh, man. What's the theory? They uh, yeah. they hire you to teach and fire you for your coaching record. <laughs> uh -huh. You <laughs> better be believe it. Offside Ooh. on no, the that. Bulldogs. That's going to push him back five yep. yards. False start, false start, excuse yep. me. Not offsides, offside being on the defense, so it's a false start on the offensive line. Coach Harmon not happy about that. Put the ball back to the original 40-yard line. Bring up third and 10 from the 30, or from the, excuse me, from the 40. So a big play here to keep that drive going, keep that clock moving. They lead 10 to 7. Danny Holbrook and Scott Mag from Kraft Stadium here at Elida High School on senior night, week 10 of the high high school football season. Here's McGew as he looks across the field. He's under pressure. He rolls to his right. He's just going to throw it away. Good job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Coach Harmon knows that a punt is the key there. Yeah, right. And, and you know, got in his clock and, you know, is he's like, okay, here comes a rush. Let's get rid of this ball. And it's a good job by him. You can see the – Maturization coming absolutely. for him, right? You and, know. and you're going to pump from the 50 here, and you're going to pin him back deep. So, yeah, absolutely a good play by that young man. You know, this, he's kind of disappointed that they didn't uh, move <laughs> the football, but sure. So, he light is in pump formation. Back deep for the Indians is Chase Berry. Punt is up, and a nice corner kick down in far corner. And it's going to go into the yeah. end zone. So, a nice effort by that young man. He had the sure. right idea. Good job. Uh, Keegan Wilson there was selling that big time. He was. He, he was like on a fair catch and was looking up, looking up. And there was three Atlanta guys that were just standing by him. <laughs> and one finally said, nah, the ball's not even close to him. TV44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, and WSN is part of that celebration. Would you donate $40 as a thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region? Donate online at WTLW.com slash donate or call 419-339-4444. First and 10 from the 20. That's where the Indians will take over. 131 to go. They're down 10-7 here on senior night at Elida High School. Chase Berry's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Jordan Banks as he goes up. Go, oh, he got <laughs> over top and got flipped up into the air. There is no fear in that young no, man. No, 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 no. Those are the kind of plays you like to watch on instant replay, Scott. <laughs> right. He just went to the pile and got thrown over top, head over heels. Yeah. It's like he's diving into the swimming pool there. He got to <laughs> give it. Tell you what, he's fighting for those extra yards for his teammates. You got to love that. Well, the swimming pool has Kevin McGuire in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a shark in there with McGuire. He right. is a beast in the yeah. middle there. Smart to go over him. That's right. Not go. You can't go through him. There's Chase Berry in the gun. Hands the ball to Banks again as he tries to roll to the right. There he's he is got outside. a seat. Go and on. there he goes. Jordan Banks down the outside. He cuts in the middle. Yeah, Jackson Cobalt trying to stop him. And he's going to be taken down at about the 18-yard line. Uh -huh. You've been calling it all night, Scott. Yeah. You've been calling it all night. Yeah, because I had just seen it two weeks ago. When he got outside, he is gone. And he does a good job of making moves in the open field. Good job by Cobalt, though, that Cobalt to took cut him the inside. Angel. Yeah, absolutely. And then made him switch to directions, so now his the pursuit could come and take him down. If he didn't, if he didn't run hard and take that angle, it would, he would have been gone down the sideline. So the biggest drive of the night so far. If the Indians can punch it in here, yeah. they can take the lead for the first time tonight. It's first and ten from the seventeen. Here comes Barry in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off. Goes off the left side, and he's going to be taken down. <laughs> Kevin McGuire just bear hugs yeah. number one Christian Jones. Yeah. And Jones did a little turnaround and didn't see Kevin McGuire. Yeah. Kevin McGuire said, Hello come here, you. there. Yeah. <laughs> come here, you. You ain't going any farther. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, when he gets his big paws on, he ain't going anywhere. No, sirree. Wow. I think that might be the end of the and third that quarter, That will be I the believe. end of the third quarter. So after three quarter, well... Yep, they're gonna, I was going to say, there's one second now it goes to zero. So after three quarters from Elida High School, the Elida Bulldogs continue to lead 10-7 to here on WOSN.
Our Red Zone sponsor is brought to you by T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit T&D Interiors on Allentown Road. T&D Interiors is our Red Zone sponsor. So, Scott, again, you called it all night. Jordan Banks finds a little seam, and he was gone. Right, and we talked about it, too, the halftime adjustments, making a play. He made a heck of a he play did. there. You're right, absolutely. Got outside and used his speed and ran, tried to run away from him, but the Bulldogs ran him down. Here comes Banks again as he gets to the right side. And he's taken down again on that left side. And, boy, a host of Bulldogs. And this is a huge, huge set of downs right here. It's third sure and is. nine from the 16. And you know Shawnee wants to get it in the end zone. I'm sure they'll take three, don't get me wrong, but they'd love to get the momentum and get the lead. Yep. And um, Carter and Edscorn and Sharp were all waiting on that corner for him to come around there. And as soon as he got there, he kind of dipped his shoulders and didn't get any farther because they were waiting for him, knowing that he wanted to get outside. And they made a heck of a play to get him down to the ground. This is third and five from the 13. There's Barry with Banks on the right side. I think Coach Cooper's going to call a timeout. Yes, You're sir. right. They're going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout up here in the booth. 11.20 to go. The Bulldogs lead 10 to 7. Welcome back to Elida High School. 11.20 to go. The Bulldogs lead 10 to 7. Our red zone sponsor is brought. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Our timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Yeah, and that timeout, it kind of tells you how important this third down is. Coach Cooper knows that, hey, if, if, let's win the game, right? you got you got to get six yards, or does he thinking, maybe he's thinking we've got to get two, maybe two yeah, or three, four, yeah. half the yards back because maybe this is four down territory because he knows this is huge because you you mentioned earlier, you're trying to take the chance to get the lead for the first time tonight. So you got two plays for six yards. Right? He was yes. burying the gun. He's going to hand the ball up to Jordan Banks as he tries to get to the left side. He's going to get that first down, and he's going to go towards the goal line. And he falls short of the goal line, but he does pick up yep. the first down. Another Citizens National Bank first down. And he had a convoy of blockers out there in front of him. Good job by Coach Cooper to, to make that adjustment and get them linemen out there and, and basically probably said, hey, let's go win a game right here, fellas. Let's get this first Absolutely. down and, and let's quickly to the line. Maybe he called two, or two, two plays in a row, maybe. There's Barry as he's in the gun. He's going to give the ball to Banks. Why he goes not? off the left side. And does he get in? Oh, he's close. He's close if he Within is. Within a football length. I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they go right up to the line really fast and go um, Barry up the middle, quarterback sneak. That's going to bring up third and goal from the half, a, half foot line, it looks <laughs> yeah, like. I was going to say it at the one, <laughs> I'd say half yard line. Yeah. but uh, Goal line, basically. You can't put half on the scoreboard. No, so. sir. So here come the Indians. They've got Jordan Banks under center. All right, that's Barry. Excuse Barry, me, Barry in the gun. Over. And he goes, let's see, does he get in? No signal. Yes, there's the yeah. signal. There is another Fat Jack's Pizza touchdown. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before and after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. So for the first time tonight, Scott May, the Shawnee Indians take a 13 to 10 lead. Yeah, there, there it is. You know, we talked about halftime adjustments. Somebody come making a play. Jordan Banks made a play to flip the field, right? Get the ball inside the in the red zone, and then from there, they kind of they want to him there, right? They he was the bell cow, right? Absolutely. They want to him, want to him, want to him. And uh, Barry finishes it off, but that was the Jordan Banks drive right there. So there's the extra point. It is up, and it is good, and it is good, and it is a huge extra point yes. because now Elida has to go get a touchdown to win yep, the game. That, that's huge. You're right. That, yeah. that extra point was huge. <clears throat> what questions do you have about life, about God, about things happening in your community or family? Get answers when you watch Life Questions. Each week, four local pastors will discuss relevant topics and answers. Questions submitted by people just like you. Life Questions is on TV 44, Sundays at 1.30 and Wednesdays at 9.30. You can also find it online at WTLW.com. So here we go, Scott. We're in for a dandy yeah. of a finish. Yeah, and, you know, just kind of Shawnee, the drive before this touchdown, they kind of spattered a little bit, and they have the, the punt off the side of the foot, but the defense comes and makes a play for them, right, to force Absolutely. the punt. Absolutely. And then they get Jordan Banks making a play. It's on uh, – it's great to see how everyone's contributing, and now the Indians are up 14 to 10 against the Bulldogs. Now it's the Bulldogs' turn. They got to come. They got to drive. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Somebody on offense has got to make a play because Shawnee's defense is uh, stepping up. Really played well tonight. Yes, they have. Right. So here's the kick. A little squibbler down to the 20 yard line. David Edscorn uh -oh. 
mishandles the ball at the goal line. You better he's, fall he, on it. And they're going to take him down at the one-yard one. line. What a great wow. kick. Wow. That ball was just bouncing all over, and Edscorn was having all kinds of trouble with it. And you saw Edscorn, he just lost it for yeah, a second and could not find the ball. Well, he, he tried to pick it up and couldn't pick it up. It's kind of like like a loose ball in basketball. They always say dive on him, but you, you know in football you can't do that because as soon as you hit the ground, you're uh, down. So if Eli is going to win this one with 10-19 to go, they're going to have to drive 99. the length 99 yards. About 90. I don't know if I – is that about the 99, 99 and, and, and a half? half. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if they can do it. 10-19 to go. First and 10 from the one-yard line. How confident are you in your sophomore quarterback to sling it out of his end zone? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I'd let Brady Kirk try to give me a few yards. <laughs> yeah, a little, little breathing room, as they or say. Or Edscorn, yes. Absolutely. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle. And Shawnee was waiting on yes, that Yes, they were. And they might maybe. Call They're, they want safety, but barely out of the end zone. Both those guys <laughs> close to that one-yard line. Yeah, I don't think he got a no. yard, Scott. It's great penetration by the front four of the, the Indians on defense there. Um, Isaiah Meeks and uh, Shannon Sewell and Achaeus Richardson and Carter Fay. I'll tell you, those, those four guys are attacking. And then right now, Elida is not controlling the line of scrimmage. No, they are not. Let's which is one of their keys to win this game. Second and 10 from the one-yard line, 9.40 to go. Shawnee leads 14-10. And it looks like, is it Elida going to take the timeout here? I believe so. Yes, yes sir. Elida's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout up here in the booth. 9.38 to go. Shawnee leads 14-10. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Scott, what do you suppose Coach Harmon told him? Other well, than the obvious, you know, you're at the one-yard line, fellas. Maybe he didn't like the play call. Maybe right. he didn't like what they've seen on defense, knowing that this is huge. A safety, that that, oh, yeah. that that really hurt. They have to get this out of the at least maybe a first down, if not, and get it so where their punter's not punting from the back of his end zone. They're going to let McGew oh. sling it out of there. So oh, what a pass. He finds Jackson Kovat across the middle, and it is a, a reception there, and a, he just slung that ball over there. Yeah. And they pick up oh, about to the 10-yard so line. One yard so short. Well, that's uh, perfect. That yeah. gets them out of the uh, goal, shadows of their goal post, at least uh, – Going to have some room for their punter if they don't get this fourth down. But so they bring up third and one from the ten yard line, about the nine and a half yard line. <laughs> Ryan McGu stood back there and just hit a beat across the middle. Ryan Koval did a great job. It was yes, their playing did. zone on the back side. He got right in the gap. Here comes that scoring around the side. Oh wow, what and, pursuit! Oh, wow, but I, fighting to get that first down. And he does get a Citizens National Bank first down as he goes across the ten yes, yard he line. Did. Oh wow, <laughs> he was hit at the nine and falls forward Ooh. to the eleven. What effort by that young man. There's, you know, he obviously wants to win this one. So plenty of time here for the Bulldogs with 8.53 to go. They want to keep this drive alive. I'm telling you, Scott, if this young sophomore leads this team down 99 yards, that would be something they'll talk about for a long right, time. And, here uh, he might uh, earn some moxie on that yes, one, won't he? Here's Magoo in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off the right side. Goes up the middle. And this is Brady Kirk. Kirk and he just about broke it loose. And, boy, that would have got everybody on their feet. Yeah. I'll tell you, <laughs> not many gets he just tackled by one guy. It takes two or three guys. Way way to run hard. And now they're already out to almost a 30-yard line already. I love the confidence Coach Harmon yes. has in these kids. And he lets uh -huh. McGoo throw from the end zone. And, here he comes back with a misdirection play to Brady Kirk, and I love the play call. And he's got Shawnee reeling a little bit now. Yep. Guessing. Here's Magoo as he hands the ball off. He'll go off the left side. This is David Edscorn. No, I'm sorry, Brady Kirk off Kirk. the left side. Yep. And I got get nine yards. Yeah. This makes uh, second and very short, and you get the whole cool, uh, playbook. Our scoreboard is provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. i got to believe you're going to get a steady diet of Brady Kirk here as long <laughs> yeah. as he's picking up seven, eight yards of carry. Yeah, and maybe throwing a little bit of Edscorn in, too. Here's Kirk again. Ooh. He finds a big hole wow. off the left side, gets tripped up, but he gets another Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah. Boy, you could have went Shane through that Sewell hole. Shane Sewell was a good job. He got his, I don't know if he got his foot out there and kind of tripped him up or he's got his hand, but. You could have drove a truck through that hole. And Scott, you know, no less than five, six minutes ago, we were talking about how yeah. 
the defensive line from Shawnee was dominating, yep. and here we see the reversal. Now the offensive line from your line right. is flexing their muscle. Maybe uh, that timeout had something to do with that. <laughs> because they've been uh, – that the front five or six guys have been playing a little bit different since that timeout. Here comes that scoring off the right side. He won't get back to the line of scrimmage, taken down by a host of Shawnee Indians. Yep. And it's Corn's a different runner than Kirk. But yes, he is. He he's more of the quick hitter, and and uh, Kirk is more of the bruiser. And Ben Bullock comes up from his <coughs> position in the backfield, safety position, and lays the lick to the running back from Elida out there. Six fifty four to go. Second and ten from the forty. Yeah, keep in mind, though, see, they have to get the ball in the end zone. Uh, field goal won't field do goal it, right? won't do it. If, or a field goal, and uh, we'll have to get the um, – oh, yeah. oh, oh, there's our – picked off. Yeah, there's our boy. That's really JJ hard. J.J. Spiker was yeah. – he was playing the linebacker, and he got a deep drop and tried to get an over-the-shoulder catch. <coughs> I, that, that, I, I just don't think – uh, Magoo seen the the drop by that guy. You're right. He, he seen that curl route against the the zone seam, but he didn't see the guy filling from the zone of his linebacker spot. That's a really tough play to make going to your left mm -hmm. and throwing back to your right, and that's tough for anybody, let alone a sophomore. Right. Six thirty nine to go. Third and ten from the forty yard line. So the last two plays, they've picked up no yardage. Here's Magoo in the gun. He's got trips to the right. He's got a man in the slot. And Coach Carmen is going to take a timeout with 6.39 to go. We'll step aside. Shawnee continues to lead 14 to 10. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Uh, Danny, just letting you know, that's Elida's second time out on this drive, and that only leaves them with one more to go in this uh, half. So They're all in on this drive. Yeah, yeah, depending on if they don't get this, that, that, that tells me they're going for it on fourth down because you don't have timeouts sure. to stop the clock. And, you know, if Elida get, or Shawnee gets it, they might take one or two minutes off. And here's McGill as he fires across the right oh. side. He misses his intended target. Yeah, he was open. He was wide open. Yes, he it was. was. No, it was Amari Walsh, the freshman, and he mm -hmm. was wide open. Yeah, he did. And he just dropped the ball out there. That's going to bring up fourth and ten from the 40. Yep, and Coach Harmon's going to punt the ball. Yeah. And uh, not a bad decision with no. six, 6.32 to go. Plenty of time. Plenty of right, time. Right, plenty of time. But you're looking at, you know, one first down, you might be less than three minutes left with the ball. You only got one timeout. Obviously, you can't use it on defense. Risky to go for sure. it, but now Shawnee's going to take timeout. I, I, I like that timeout call by Coach Cooper because he might think that, hey, they might have a trick play up his sleeve. <clears throat> TV 44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Dot com. So they got one timeout, Scott. The defense has played a really good ball game tonight. So your hope here is you can limit them on a return, pin them deep, and get a quick three and out. Right, right. And and you're looking at, you know, Coach Cooper's probably saying, hey, let's don't jump off sides. You know, let's watch the football and make sure you, you do your assignment because maybe a trick play coming here. Let's not let them catch us sleeping. Absolutely. So Elida's in pump formation. Chase Berry's back deep for the Indians. Punt is up, and it is a good one as it drives back Berry to the 30-yard line. The ball bounces. Bounce backwards. And it is touched by an Elida defender at about the 33-yard line, and that's where Shawnee will take over. Yep. So we take a look at Shawnee's last three games. They lose to Van Wert on September 30th. They beat Ottawa Glandorf 21 to 7, and then they take Kenton last week 35 13. You look over to Elida, and you talk about a tough back end of a schedule. Yeah. In the last four weeks, they've played Defiance, Wapakoneta, St. Mary's, and Van Wert. And you know they want to get that ugly taste out of their mouth of that big loss from Van Wert last week. Yeah, absolutely. And Van Wert, those are three <laughs> teams that can put some points on the board. Absolutely. So here's Chase Berry. He's got Jordan Bank to his right. He's got two receivers offset to his left. 
Barry's going to take the ball, hand it to Banks. He tries to get around. He's being chased by the Elida defense, and he's going to get a seam. And there goes Jordan Banks yeah. down the right side. And Jordan Banks just stiff arm, yeah. stiff armed an Elida defender. And I'm not real sure who it was because I couldn't see the number. But he just threw him out of bounds. I think that's Isaac Earl, actually, I think. Looks like 15. But there's Banks again. They've been going up the middle, up the middle, and he's been getting outside. Uh, Elida did a good job of controlling him, and now he's bouncing them outside, and he's getting out in the space. and you Picks know, up another Citizens right. National Bank first down. So it's the Jordan Banks show here in the second half. Sure has. So here's Barry in the gun. Banks to the left, two receivers to the right. Oh, almost oh, a mishap yeah. on the snap. Here comes Jordan Banks as he goes around the right side. That could have been a disaster. I think so. I think that was to Barry, but to Banks – Kind of cut in front of him. He and did. And You're absolutely took it right. away from him. <laughs> That's going to keep that clock what running. An, what an athletic play by that young man! My he just goodness, clutched it out of the air. He's like, all right, <laughs> give it to me. I'm going to run in here. Clock <laughs> runs, and you just wonder when Coach Harmon's going to use that timeout. Is he's only got one in the holster? Yeah. He's probably going to hold that as long absolutely. as he can and, and well, rely on his defense to try to make a play here. Somebody's got to make a play to get a stop or maybe force a turnover here. Here's Barry in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself, go off the left side, and he's close to a first down. Running through guys. Oh, Look my at that goodness. Look that at that man. effort. Yes, he's going to come up about a yard, maybe two yards short. Maybe, yeah, two yards. That's going to bring up third and two. So big play of the night. And I know I've said it a couple times, yeah. but with 5.15 to go and the clock running, third and two from the 37, and the Bulldogs down 14 to 10, their defense has got to make a play. Right, and, and nonetheless, I, you know, if they don't get it, you're looking at uh, close to four minutes left before they probably punt it because I'm sure they're going to maybe take a five-yard sure. penalty sure. or whatever, delay a game because they're not going to let that run as – Long as possible. So here's Barry in the gun. He's got Banks to his left. Barry's going to keep it himself. Goes up the middle, oh, wow. and he picks up a Citizens National uh -oh. first down, and he almost squirts yeah, through. Yeah, about got through there. And that is a huge, huge play for the he Indians. sure was. He got hit, and then I, I didn't see, but somebody, like, kind of pushed him through. He kind of got hit and got stopped, but then somebody pushed him <laughs> through the hole, and he took off. I thought yes, he, he did. I thought he was going to get there <laughs> and break it, but I think uh, – Koval got him. Lucky for him. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 26-yard line. 4.26 to go. Clock continues to run. Shawnee leads 14 to 10. This is Barry in the gun. He's got Banks to his left. He's got a man in the slot. And he's got no receiver. Or one receiver to the left, excuse me. Here comes Barry as he goes off the left side. And he's going to be taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Koval. Jackson Koval does a great job of getting yeah. up and extending the corner there. Setting the edge and not letting him get around. But be, that clock continues to run. I'd be very surprised if Shawnee puts the ball in the air. Uh, yeah, We're going to be a steady, a steady diet of Barry and um, Banks. There's no doubt about it. Especially now that you know, I bet you, I don't. I haven't seen Noonan, right? Zach Noonan no, from Zach, when he got he, home. Yeah, he has not been he in has the game since he was back, hurt. So I, I hope that young man's okay. Absolutely. But right now is when they could use him, lean on him because he's a big power runner. Here's Barry in the gun, Banks to the left. He's going to hand to Banks, who tries to get around the left side. He's going to be taken down for a gain of about three, but here comes a flag uh -oh. in. And you just got to wonder if hold. that's not a hold, and it yes, is a sir. hold, and that is a crucial play for the Shawnee Indians. That's going to back them up. In a, in, a, in a situation where you want to churn out first downs, this makes it very difficult with a 10-yard penalty. Holding. Right, but it also repeats the down. Now you got sure. also 25 second clock starts. Yeah. So now you're looking at a snap it second down with three minutes. You well, know, they're they're going to force Coach Harmon to use that timeout right, because they're going to milk. They're going to have to once he sets it. They're going to start. Should be running the clock here. Yeah, there they go. They waited about three seconds. Yes, they did. But it should have started on the uh, chop, but. So second and 18 from the 39. This is Barry in the gun. He's got Banks to the left. He's got a receiver out wide left. He's got one in the slot high up on the left side. Here comes Barry. He's going to keep it himself as he tries to get around that left side. He cuts it up the middle. He gets close 
to about yeah. seven yard gain back to the original line of scrimmage. Right. And a great job by that young man. Right. But you know that so they're gonna snap it at two twenty. And I play. just gotta believe that Coach right. Harmon's gonna wait to see if they don't pick up this first down. He he may use it on the next play, right, is what to, I'm thinking. Because to see yeah. he's gonna need as much time. And then again, if you're Shawnee, do you do you go for it on fourth down or you try to kick a field goal? I don't know. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Right. That's, that's a tough <laughs> that's spot. That's why we're up here, brother. Yeah. <laughs> my, me personally, I'd go for it, sure. even if you wouldn't get it, just because you looking at another 40 seconds or see what the timeout gets. So here's Barry in the gun. He gets the snap. He's going to go off the left side following the block of Banks. And he gets around and he gets the first down. Wow. A huge wow, play. Huge right there. A huge play wow. by that young man. That's going to be tough. Chase Berry yeah. picks up another Citizens National Bank And with only down. one timeout to go, and I think Eli is yep. going to call a timeout. Gonna yep. We're going to take our last timeout of the night with 2.17 to go. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Kraft Stadium here at Elida. And... Uh, Scott, we were talking during the break. You talked about the time situation here. Yeah, because, you know, 40-second play clock, so you got three downs of 40 seconds. I don't know, maybe right. Coach Harmon's going to say, hey, let them score. That's the only way we can get the ball get the back ball because back. they yeah. might just – they could just set on it, you know, and uh, because they had no timeouts left. So here comes Jordan Banks as he goes around the right side. He's being pursued, pursued by the Bulldogs, and he's going to take it up to about the seven-yard line, and that clock continues yeah. to run. It'll bring up about – Third down and yeah, six. I think more importantly is there's still 30 seconds Excuse left. Excuse me, second down, yeah. Now you're looking at they're going to snap it at 130 and then 40 seconds for down three. Mm. You're right. It, it might be prudent of them to let them score because they're just the clock is just continuing to run here. Yeah, you'd have to score quick, get the two-point conversion, recover. The, I mean, there's a lot yeah, of what a, ifs. Yeah, right. Sure, sure, but, sure. you know, you, or try to pull out the ball and get the ball out, but they might just start taking a knee after this play. Here comes Banks off the left side as he tries to cut it back. Smart He's move. taken down. Yeah. He just stopped, and that's yeah. a good move well, by that I young man. I think he man. tried yeah. to cut back, and his cleats just came out from under him, and then he just said, heck with it, I'm just going to go down. Now 30 seconds, you're looking at under 40, a minute, yeah. under, well under a minute, maybe around 35 seconds before they snap it. So they bring up third and four from I think the 12-yard line. I think they can take knee twice and game over. Yeah, I think you're right. <clears throat> they don't have to. Or let this run. I was going to say they're going to let that clock well, run down. Well, run this and then. Uh, yeah, the clock won't stop. Right. Unless they pick up the first down. But I would just. Right. Would just, yeah, just, just, take, gonna, just go side to side. Right. Just go down. I think you can run backwards. Yeah. That's what Barry's going to do as he goes off the right side. And then go down. As and he's taken down. Yep. Game over. Less than 40 seconds. Yep. That, that'll do it. Yep. yep. That'll do it. So the Shawnee Indians, an unbelievable comeback. They're going to get the win here tonight as Elida has no timeouts left. And Scott, just an unbelievable performance by the Indians. I, yeah, I, th I right. thought when it was 7 to nothing, they had no life in them. They just did a great job. Right. And that was from the opening drive. They, the, Elida ran the ball right down their throat, but – they hung around, hung around, and we talked to the halftime adjustments about somebody coming up and making a play. The defense made a play. They they stopped them, basically went four and out. They didn't get any yards. And then Banks hits the outside and makes the long run, and then they kind of – he was the bell cow running back, and then they put it in the end zone for the win. So good job by the Indians to persevere and win this one tonight. That's going to do it for me, Elida High School, the final tonight. The Shawnee Indians come into town and take senior night away from the Elida Bulldogs. They win 14 to 10. For Scott Mag, I'm Danny Holbrook and our entire WSN crew saying we'll see you next week for the start of the playoffs.